Hello everybody, it's Friday night, and we're watching That's Cool Drink, and we're going to have a great time tonight, you guys. I've got Bill, and I've got Rich, um, and we've got technical issues to boot, so it's going to be wild. Um, in, in right behind, in the background, right before this, um, there was like a 30 second delay between a bunch of us, and it was hilarity because no one knew what was happening um at all so i was just like let's just go so i think it caught up right at the end it was pretty wild but um and i also have had some technical issues my computer like overheated and tried to burn the place down um and kicked me completely out um i had to log back in so i may just leave at some point and um and bill and rich will take over uh when that happens but Guys, it's going to be a good one. we got a special Friday night edition of That's Cool Drink. And I've got Mr. Bankship Billy, Bill Armstrong. Maybe he'll be on Woo! there. He is. And I've got the Canadian Chuck Norris, Mr. Mexican, Rich Guido. Mex I'm Mexican tonight. But... <laughs> well, don't we all race in Mexico, Rich? Yeah, you, pretty much. Pretty much. You are. That, well, this is the full America experience. Like, we've got. See, we're, this is going to be great. This is going to be ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> uh, maybe, maybe I'll okay. sign at let's, the same time I'm speaking, and that'll take care of the delay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, wait, we could just drink it. Yeah. <clears throat> oh man. <clears throat> okay. Um, so I'll tell you what we're gonna do. I, I think this is on my end. So I'm gonna log in with my phone. You okay. Hey Rich Guido, what's going on? <laughs> I don't know, Bill. Is clutch burners? Should you do the clutch burners intro? I, I sure will. Welcome to the Clutch Burners Podcast. You're, you're home for stick shift racing, stick shift knowledge, and two of the best looking stick shift guys on the planet. And, and here's my co-host over here, the Canadian Chuck Norris, Rich Guido. And that guy, and that guy with the flat tire, that's usually the view I see him in in my rear view mirror. Uh, that's Bill Armstrong. <laughs> Okay, I'll give it to you now, just because you finally went 851, which is pretty darn impressive. I have to say, it. I'm, I'm, I'm a little jealous, not jealous, envious, but proud, proud of you. That's oh, so you'll, awesome. You'll be, you'll be there quick. I'm still making changes. Oh yeah, I'm. Yep, yep. I just, uh, yeah, I haven't actually followed up with you since I, I made a phone call to, uh, I made a couple of phone calls this week, so. I can bring you up to speed on those since we're still waiting for Adam. <clears throat> um, so one of the changes I want to do was, yeah, Michael Narx is a debate and switch. Yeah. We decided <laughs> to try the live platform instead, <laughs> but um, <clears throat> yeah. So I, uh, I've been researching, uh, building a new intercooler uh, for my setup. And I was looking at the Garrett cores because they're supposed to be the best, but they're very limited on the size for the air to air cores. Um, but Bell has come out with a new core and I forget what it's called. It's not even on their website, <clears throat> but I spoke to them. They gave me a part number and it's supposed to be more efficient. Um, and the nice thing about the Bell cores is you, they have way more sizes available. So I'm going to see if I can squeeze, I'm going to see if I can squeeze an extra inch in there. <laughs> <laughs> It's the big goes, ship Billy core. <clears throat> yeah, so four and a half inch core instead of a three and a half inch core. Um, and 
just changing Every the size half inch matters that's that's what i hear hey you know what <laughs> um <clears throat> but it's should on paper with the calculation it should add about another 500 cfm worth of flow which um we'll see what that does i'm gonna do the first race week with the same turbo setup and Whoa, see what he's on his phone now Woo! is there a fire hey, adam? put the fire out adam <laughs> holy cow you guys do we have a delay still no i don't uh, think so I think, I think he's good are we good I, I don't know can you hear us hold on let me <laughs> good god i gotta get the air the air pods going here there we go <clears throat> there you go right. that's better holy moly y'all good, good thing we're live <laughs> yeah welcome yeah. to the clutch burners podcast uh there adam <clears throat> Hey Adam, uh, yeah, thanks for the podcast. Coming. Here, brought to you by that's cool drink, and thanks to, <laughs> thanks for running it for uh, for a couple of minutes. What um, <clears throat> what I miss? Let's holy cow! I don't know what's going well, on. Bill, Bill, was, Bill was telling me on paper how um, um, paper is going to get a lot faster <laughs> um, by his calculations. Yeah, just doing uh, doing some research and talking to Bell about getting a new core. I'm going to build a new intercooler, um, which will flow more air, be a little bit more efficient and uh, less restrictive, and we'll see what happens. I'm going to try that with the same turbos, so I'll have A B comparison. So, and yeah. those are pretty tiny turbos, like 62s. Yes, 62s. They are they're they have a custom uh, custom wheels in them. So they're, that's right, Rich. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> um, but there's two of them. <clears throat> um, yeah, they're custom wheels. They're uh, Turbos Direct. Um, build them. So I couldn't really tell you what Garrett Turbo they are because they have custom wheels in them. But um, another dude I know with a small block Ford has gone 780s on the same Turbos. With what transmission? Well, with, with a purse... A purse laden transmission, right, right, <laughs> and 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 the car was about seven hundred pounds lighter, so it's just a couple differences, but <laughs> no difference at all. It's, it's, on paper, it's, it's exactly it's the same. exactly the same. <laughs> yep, exactly. If it you, you just as, as, with a math equation, it says equals. It's all good. No big deal. <laughs> right, right. No big deal at all. Exactly. Um, so, exactly. guys, I'm uh, I'm gonna be like without a ton of technology here. Um, to be honest, I didn't plan a ton for this one because you guys are my buddies, and I don't need a bunch of background info. To be honest, like we're just gonna party here for uh, as long as we want to party here, and uh, and and we're gonna hang out and have a good time. So, thank you so much for joining me. Um, if you guys didn't know, if you're in the comments there and whatnot, um, <clears throat> these guys are the proprietors of the Clutch Burners podcast. And um, and Bill has the Ford powered Ford Fairlane over his shoulder there, and uh, and Rich has got the Pontiac powered GTO over his shoulder there as well, and um, and these dudes are uh, it, it's funny because they they're they're friends they race each other a lot they um, they talk shit it's it's fun <laughs> it's like it's cool it's good stuff so um, like. I, and you guys know, and I told you in the background, like I do a ton of history. So like, I, I want to start with, with Rich, like <clears throat> Rich, why are, like, why are you a car dude? And why have, why have you become this like Pontiac dude? Well, it is, it is interesting. And I don't even know if I've ever told Bill much of this, but uh, um, if I back up all the way, just a quick history, I mean, I grew up on a farm and there was, you know, we, we didn't have a lot of money, so we fixed everything ourselves. If the tractor uh, broke, like we would be splitting it in half and fixing it on the farm. All the farm equipment got serviced at home. So um, mechanical aptitude was was not really an option growing up. You, you And so then we had go-karts and my, you know, my brother and I had motorcycles and so really always been into motorsports, just not competitively. Back then it was, you know, motorcycles, motorcycles to get to the irrigation, to change the, the irrigation. And, um, but so we were always around equipment growing up. And and you just had to, like, it had to run. So you're fixing it yeah. no matter what. Yep, exactly. Um, 
you know, go-karts were really, I think for, for a lot of car guys were are in back then. And, and we, you know, continually broke that thing um, growing up. So we were always, you know, modifying it. I still have that go-kart under my, uh, under my deck. And um, <laughs> right now it's got a 440 Yamaha twin cylinder in it that will <laughs> drive you right to the scene of the incident. Really <laughs> <That's fast>. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and a little tires, so uh, I could I, at some point I could tell you some stories about that thing. But uh, when I was in Fort McMurray, um, you know, working in the petrochemical industry, I started started getting some money. And my my first car was a Buick Skyhawk, and uh, you know, I drove that thing up there with everything I owned, which was in Fort McMurray, and uh, it eventually shit the bed. And then I bought a Honda Prelude. Um, and as I, uh, you know, as I was driving that, I still wanted something to work on. So I, I bought a Volkswagen Beetle first that was Baja. And uh, I had a blast with that thing. Actually, that was probably the first car I almost tried to burn the garage down with. No, I mean, uh, that was the first one that uh, um, <laughs> that I that I restored. You know, I did a bunch of welding on. Uh, and then for some reason, I had to do the interior after I was welding on the exterior um and and so about about where are we right now timeline like so that would like, have been 25 years ago okay all right so i'm so, 55 now so i'm like um you know i'm that's 30 30 30, 30. yeah 30 yeah, yeah even so can, even me. canadian matt you got to take your you got to take your shoes off for that surely. one surely maybe not yeah. quite your pants off but yeah. <laughs> So it was, it was shortly after I got married and, uh, and then, um, uh, the Volkswagen Beetle, actually, I played with that till I, till I moved down to, to Red Deer and I was looking, looking for another project at that point that the Beetle was fun, but it wasn't super fast. It was a stick. Um, well, yeah. And there was a, a 1964 and a half Mustang convertible that a guy had done a whole bunch of restoration on. And uh, oh, oh, look at how he froze. <laughs> <laughs> Check this. Okay, I'm gonna try to get back in. Hold on, <clears throat> with, with my, my well, well knees. Okay. Oh, look at go. that. Oh, looking good. Hold on. <laughs> oh, Rich, that was beautiful. The way you froze. <laughs> was it right when I said Ford? It was no. It was like this. <laughs> okay. Woo! I'm back. <laughs> Holy cow, you guys. <clears throat> I now know how to get back door into my own show. Ooh, nice. Okay. Nice. So we got that. So anyway, um, so you know, you got this prelude, you're you're 30. We figured out using um using some American math. Yeah. <laughs> um, um and you're at the 64 and a half Mustang. Okay. And so, you know, it looked like a good deal. It was one of those deals that somebody had started, didn't finish. And, um, uh, I start, you know, I got a line on it and the guy said, he's going to give the guy one more option that did a whole bunch of work on the car to buy it before me. And he ended up buying it. So I, I was looking at a Ford, my brother and my dad are both Ford guys. Um, and then, uh, then I was just looking for a muscle car to be honest with you. And I found a, a 69 Firebird convertible um, that was at a reasonable reasonable price and it was running so I could enjoy it while I was trying to figure out what to do. And um, so I had a small block Chevy in it and an automatic. And uh, uh, I, you know, I wanted to put a Pontiac back in and, and then just proceeded from there to, you know, build that thing up till it was too fast for uh, being a convertible and, and then, you know, it's just like anything. Once you start, you know, acquiring parts and learning about it, uh, then, you know, I, and, and realizing that they were the best, uh, then I just stuck with Pontiac. I have a question. <laughs> question. Um, yes. You don't what have was, to raise your hand. Oh, okay. <laughs> what, you what can color just was, talk. What color That's, was the purse that you had with that convertible? Um, 
Well, the car was silver with a black top, so a purple purse worked pretty good. Oh, purple okay, good. with the tassels. That's a good yeah. purse. I've, I've seen a, good a purse. purse like that before. <laughs> and, 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 it, and eventually, it was that was part of the reason that I sold it, is I wanted a stick car. I knew I wanted overdrive, and I, you know, I knew I wanted to go faster. And yeah, and, and the convertible is thirteen ninety nine or something ridiculously slow to put a have to put a bar in it. And yeah, yeah so I mean, it was going mid, know. it was going mid twelves, and uh, <laughs> you know, couldn't race it anymore at the track because they had pretty much kicked me off. So it was time to uh, step up. And looking back, looking at Devin Vanderhoof, I'm thinking, you know, maybe I should have just kept that and put a cage in it, but. Uh, Honestly, convertibles seem like a great idea till nobody wants to ride with the top down, and uh, but you, uh, which sometimes that's okay too. Think yeah, how much easier it is to put the roll cage in a convertible. Yeah, you don't have to build it and then lift it up. You just set it down. Set it in there, right? Yeah. You could almost yeah. like take it out and finish yeah. everything, and then put it back in. Totally, totally. Yeah. Um. So the '69 you sold, and that's what led you to. The GTO you've got now. Yeah. And so my brother actually had found uh, two GTOs. It was a 67 and a 65. And the 65, they had pulled out of the wrecking yard because they wanted the seats out of it. So <clears throat> they were actually restoring the 67 GTO and the 65 was just sitting there. And so my brother and I bought both cars. He bought the 67. I bought the 65, 65 and you know, it was black, red interior, stick car. It was originally a four-barrel car, but it actually came with a tri-power um, and a 389. <clears throat> None of it was running. It was it was in horrible shape. So uh, my wife was looking at me quite funny when <clears throat> I uh, couldn't, couldn't roll it off the trailer because the diff was locking up, because there was no yoke on the, on the rear end. And, and I, the firebird was done like it was sharp looking car and here i rolled it i couldn't even i had to jack it up and tried to kill myself trying to get it off the trailer it was just a, it was a, quite a pile of junk <laughs> so it's made leaps and bounds since i mean obviously the things um you've done a ton of work to bring it to where it's at but um but here it is and it's your it's your car it's your it's your the thing you love yeah i so i did everything to it like i uh i did a frame off um had the body on a rotisserie out out in front of my garage um your what garage okay uh, <laughs> just checking room. just checking uh, <laughs> just making sure we're i mean talking about the same thing <laughs> um you know sandblasted the frame did all that stuff the goal i, I the made mad <laughs> No, you didn't. No, I, I don't get mad. Even maybe, but I'm not mad. Um, so yeah, it was painted in my garage. Yeah, the frame was painted, and everything was uh, everything was done in there. The goal, the goals were really um, 1150s and uh, 20 miles per gallon were the original goals for the car. And did it do both at the same time? Nope. It, it actually didn't get the mileage until I put the the turbo on it. Like it had a pro charger. Um, it had a dominator for a while, the first drag week, and had a blow-through carb. <clears throat> but as soon as I put that big-ass turbo on there and fuel injection, you know, with Blasco's help, it, uh, you know, I think if you if you drive that car without a trailer behind it, you can get 22 miles to the gallon doing 80 miles an hour with the overdrive so and it's going a little quicker than 1150s now so. thousand cubes yeah yeah thousand <laughs> cubes a little bit a little bit <clears throat> um all right bill it's your turn so why I, I mean a lot of people don't know you've got an aircraft mechanic like background but yeah you obviously oh. were a car dude before you were an aircraft dude um, but what got you into cars specifically and why in the hell a Fairlane? Well, so I don't, I don't quite have the lineage of story that Rich has because um, I bought this Fairlane in 1990 and I've had it since. Um, it was my second car, in fact. Um, <clears throat> but to rewind a bit, I also had a go-kart 
and I had a lawn mowing business. And so I built a trailer for it and I would tow my lawnmower, turn gas, all that stuff to the lawn mowing jobs. Um, the go -kart, go kart had no, yes, it had zero brakes on it the whole time I owned it. Thank God. I, and I nearly died. I nearly died a few times, literally almost got hit by cars. <laughs> but <clears throat> one of the coolest things is my best friend at the time, he had like a really nice racing go-kart and it was a five horse Briggs and Stratton. And I was like, I got to get this thing go faster than his. And do you remember those old <laughs> weird? <laughs> That's so weird. <laughs> it's weird that this is, this is a theme. I'm sensing a theme. <laughs> So do you remember those old plastic um, Coke bottle banks? Like they were green plastic. Oh, yeah. Big. Yeah, like green plastic. Yeah, it had the, the big top and the, the coin slot. Right, and it went down like this. So I cut the top of it off. So I had this perfect big Ram air scoop that would taper down, and I put a little 90 on it, put it right on the top of the car or bolt to the top of the motor. You literally had to sit with your head to the side because the scoop was right there. And as I would... <laughs> And, and it, it didn't have brakes, and the throttle was a lawnmower throttle on the right hand side of the seat, right? So, um, so literally, I would go full throttle, and I would lean back and just lean out the carburetor until it was just screaming, and and I beat my buddy like it was faster than his. Nice, um, yeah. So, Hell yes, with no brakes. So even, yeah, right. Just yeah, really smart. Um, and even as a little kid, um, growing up, my dad had, uh, my dad really liked cars, um, but he really didn't know much about like how to work on them, but he had a CJ five that he had a shop put a 360 in out of an AMX in it. And so it made uh, like 300 horse or something, but it was a hoot. Like people didn't know. And it, it was cool. Oh, yeah. And I just always, always thought that would be super cool. I was always very mechanically inclined and, just into cars. And uh, when I was 17, I totaled my first car like a couple of days before my birthday. Um, and I told my parents, I said, Oh, you know, I was in the hospital and I was like, I don't think I want a Mustang. Well, that was the dumbest thing I ever said. <laughs> they helped me to that. And I had given my best friend um, this Ford book for Christmas. And of course, I was reading it before I gave it to him. And I saw a Fairlane GT in there and I was like, oh, that looks pretty sweet. And I'm reading it. And it said, well, it's a unibody, just like the Mustang. It weighs 400 pounds more than the Mustang. I'm like, that's the car. That's the car. Because I knew <clears throat> my stepdad, I knew they had had a Fairlane growing up. And so I came oh. down that and I said, I said, okay, I've decided what I want to get. I want to get a big, old, heavy car that I can work on. And they're like, oh, that's a great idea. I said, I want to get a fair lane. And he and he lit up. He's like, oh, we had a fair lane. I already knew this. And I was just like, yeah. yeah like, <laughs> why totally, did he do this? I totally got him. So we went and looked at two of them. The first one was a little bit out of my budget. It was like 4000 bucks, And it already had a 351 Cleveland in it. And then we looked at this one. And it was like $3,200. And it was an absolute wreck. It was so bad. I mean, the exhaust pipes came out under the doors. They were held up with bailing wire. <clears throat> it had like purple tint on the windows. The back seat, they had covered it in that like fake lamb's wool. Oh, but then they, yeah. They had melted like two big hearts in the back. It was so bad. And it had, <laughs> it had the whole power steering set up, but it wasn't connected. So going down the road, you're just doing this. And the car is wandering all over the place. <laughs> And it had 289 in it. And oh, that's good. Yeah, the rear end, <clears throat> the perches weren't even the right location. So the whole rear end sat like three inches off to one side. It was so bad. Um, but, you know, I've worked on it since. First time I went to the track, it ran, uh, I don't know, like 17 2 or something. Um, yeah, that's it. And then I've just worked on it since then. And, uh, I knew I wanted to do drag week in the car and it had a, it had an automatic in it for like, I don't know, a long time until, until 2013. And I, uh, I put a TKO 500, in it, 600 in it because I wanted to do drag week and right. at the time I had 457 gears in the car, but with the TKO, it was great. 
And, yeah, who uh, cares? It, it yeah. had like a 75 overdrive or something like that in that. Or 70. Well, it would cruise like 75 miles an hour at 3,200 RPM. I was like, this is awesome. And now, now I can't even imagine how awful that would be. Oh, but, yeah. But yeah. But going like, from where you came from, I mean. Totally, yeah. Three-speed automatic yeah. world. Yeah, E4 with a 4,000 stall and 47 gears. Right. <laughs> you didn't want to drive it on the highway. Hell um, no. And um, yeah. So then I met Rich at the first drag week, and it's been downhill ever since. Our go karts got our go karts got way more expensive. <laughs> uh, a, little, a little bit faster. <laughs> and we're right. still trying and to beat your buddies. Yeah. Exactly. Now you're doing everything you can to beat your buddies. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's right. And I've been successful until just this last year. Or so. <laughs> yeah, and and you got some room to make up. And uh, oh and yes, we'll, I do. We'll, uh, yeah. Let's, let's just go. I mean, let's go to it. I mean, you guys have been duking it out since, I mean, like you said, 2013, pretty much. And um, well, you guys, you know, you, you, you made smaller steps. Um, I believe you were still naturally aspirated when, uh, when Rich went to the pro charger. And so then yeah, it was we were, yeah, we charge. were both, both naturally aspirated when I met him, but his car was in the tens. I mean, it was, it was brutal. And I'd never, like when I went to drag week, um, my car had gone 12 thirties was the quickest had ever gone at Bandemir. And when I got down to sea level, it went 11 sixties and dude, I was on the top of the world. Right. It's like the craziest tire. thing ever. I was like, this is awesome. Uh, it's so fast. <laughs> and then, then I smoked the clutch and met rich and, and like, I kept hearing like, I'm like, dude, can this guy ever shit? Like he doesn't know how to shift. Like I kept hearing this base plated transmission, clang, clang, clang. <laughs> and, right. And then I think, was it 2014 you had the Pro Charger on it, Rich? Uh, it would have been the second drag week. 20, yeah. yeah. I that think was, that's uh, right. I think it was Pro Charger in 14, yeah. And stock, stock Pontiac block with the Pro Charger, yeah. Yeah, and I think, if I'm not mistaken, I painted my car between 13 and 14. I had gone through a divorce and so i restored the whole thing that's the best thing for fixing up a car is just get divorced oh yeah um, yeah because then you just have time and, but, yeah and i restored it painted put a roll cage in it mustang two front end but i still had the 351 cleveland in it and and uh it ran pretty good i mean it was a pump gas motor but uh you know it was ran mid 11s at sea level and it was like 3550 pounds like it was yeah. it was cool but and and but I can then, attest to the the sea level horsepower gain because same deal. 2014, I went to Tulsa is where we started, I think, and unloaded the car off the trailer. And I was like, Brad, let's go get some dinner. Like you know, sit down and getting on the highway like I always do. Getting on the on ramp, I I gave it some shit and I almost crashed that car. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like. <laughs> like I like nearly crashed it and got it back straight. And Brad had never ridden with me in a car. Um, <laughs> the first time he rode with me in a car was drop towing the car to Tulsa in my brand new truck. Um, so, you know, he's looking at me like this, this dude can't drive. I'm about to spend a week with him. He just almost crashed us on the highway. Um, it was bad news bears, but yeah, I mean stuff. That's what, that's what made me put a blower on my car. <clears throat> Cause I got done with race week or uh, drag week in 14 and I came home and I was like, this is lame, dude. And it was the <laughs> same stuff. Like my car ran 12 fifties or sixties. Um, yeah. I, think I got it to like 12 twenties at one point and yeah, I got it down to sea level and it was like, I like 11 65 with like a 75 shot. And I, like I had 125 shot for it. Yeah. Yeah. So I was like, this is wild, dude. Um, yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. Sea level's awesome. Sea yeah. Was was, pretty good. Uh, at, at that first drag week, that was, uh, <clears throat> that was one of the things that I, I saw in Bill. It was like, oh, this dude, look how pumped he is. That like he's just, he was ecstatic. Like the air was that much better. And, and, and <clears throat> just hilarious watching his face light up and, uh, you know, be Bill Armstrong when uh, he goes, you know, with, with, with this newfound power that he had found at sea level it was pretty yeah, funny i mean it's a it's like 100 horsepower i mean yeah you know yeah, it's, it's 30 it's 30 percent on an na car it's, yeah, that, it's that's no that's no joke yeah, yeah it's pretty sweet it's it's like a 100 shot is on all the time all the, the bottle, time the bottle right. 
never going to run dry. <laughs> All the time. It's I'm like, who lives here? This is stupid. <laughs> That's right. It, it works the other way, too, with parachutes. Um, <clears throat> right. Parachutes down in Florida, they hit so hard. It, you, you think you're going 190 miles an hour. It's like, what the hell? Did I throw an anchor out behind me? Yeah. And that's actually one that I, I realized um, in uh, in jump school. So I bet. school, same deal. Like we did all of our airborne jumps at sea level. And so, I mean, opening shock at sea level is wild. I mean, it gets you good. And yeah, uh, yeah come come to Denver and I'm like, is that thing open? Dude, <laughs> am I going to? Oh, no, I'm good. So does that mean? Do you use the same size chute? So do you then do you hit the ground faster in Denver than you did there? Correct. Oh wow, that's probably real good for your back. Yeah, yeah, not service connected. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah. Um, so, Rich, how quick did you go with the Pro Charger? Well, so if we go to the first drag week, um, when it was NA, it went ten, ten fifty four, I think. Um, the very first drag week, and then when I when I put the pro charger on, it was actually not much quicker. Like, um, it was it was literally right around the same the same uh, ET. Um, it was just in a cheaper motor, cheaper motor. The other uh, mm -hmm. the, the aftermarket block, uh, you know, it was five hundred seventeen cubes, <clears throat> um, but it ended up being just about the same, like mid. Mid mid tens, ten forty, ten fifty, somewhere around there with the pro charger. But that was on a four fifty five, right? Yeah, yeah, Stock that's right. On the clock, yeah, yeah, yeah. It it worked good. It drove good. I mean, I took the I was taking the belt off for the long drives because those pro chargers are just, just a little bit loud, dude. And it uh, was so bad. It sounded broken. <laughs> it was so noisy. <laughs> yeah, you, you need to hear straight cut gears in those things oh. are. Ooh, wow. was, yeah, I think it's five point one to one ratio. So if you're going five thousand RPM in that thing, that thing's going twenty five thousand RPM. Right, <laughs> like just screams. And uh, yeah, yeah. yeah, so you just take the belt off, take the belt off, do all the cruising with without the belt on, and that's a good time. That's a good time. Yeah. And so, and so like, yeah, Bill, you're still in a, and then. Um, yeah, so I ended up hurting the TKO um, on, I think, that second drag week. And then I immediately had it faceplated after kind of checking out Rich's deal. But then I had already started, I was already in the process of building this, excuse me, twin turbo 427. Right, you, had, you had the block, I think, and maybe the heads. Um, yeah, I had bought the block from. Um, Dick and Hedge's dad. Um, I'm forgetting Keith. his name. Keith. Yes, I bought it from him because it was like 900 bucks less. I was like, oh, this is a this is a steal. <laughs> and I was like, it's meant to be. So I hadn't quite planned to build it that soon, but when that block popped up, I snagged it. I snagged it. <clears throat> and then um, and then I got hooked up with uh, Scott Patton with PMP Performance. And because I, you know, I, I was comfortable putting a motor together, but I'd never never dabbled with a boosted setup before um so i had him build that and then i ordered right out of the gate i ordered a face plated t56 magnum from liberty's gear um <clears throat> and uh went that route and then i i skipped any kind of drag and drive in 2015 and right. then 2016 i called rich you know we were we were we were being we were pretty good friends we were talking on the phone and stuff i was like dude you got to come down to this this thing's gonna be so sweet and he came down and I think we've done race weeks ever since I lose count, but you could see my windshield banner up there. It yeah, was like I don't know, 16 or something is all of them except 2015. And some of the years, three or four years, there's two of them. Right. Um, <clears throat> and then that was the year I think I started beating up on rich, like, cause I was boosted and I had a bigger motor. And then I think that next year he came back with a turbo. Like it was all, it was all on the table <laughs> after that. And, 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 and then, yeah. And I mean, really yeah, it's just, it's kind of been blow for blow. And yeah. Yeah. The, and the, I, way, the way it works out, you guys race each other. 
for yeah, most of these two. You gotta tell them the story with your motor and Todd because it's really it's a great story with how you ended up with the Pro Charger and then going back to that same motor from Drag Week 2013. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> I actually had so I went well, so 2013 they built me that motor. I I took it there and they wanted me to debut it. So I didn't pay anything for the motor. Nice. Here, I have this motor. Uh, get it up. Go, go do go do drag week and uh yeah. let's chat when you get back we didn't really talk much about the chat when i got back but in the in the because in the meantime i had sold my my other engine <laughs> and so anyways i went down there i got second in the big block street race naturally aspirated the first time i went to drag week um <clears throat> and then uh when i got back there was a bit of sticker shock going on when they said hey you want to buy the motor and they told me the price and i'm like uh and there, there was some reasons that that wasn't the only reason, but I, knew I wanted to boost it. Um, and it's got really big bores and not much meat between the cylinders. And it's got a bunch of whizzy shit. Like it's, uh, it's a wide part head. So the, right. the, uh, the lifters are offset. The rockers are offset. Um, so if I have problems, there's not many things I can swap. No, you're done. I, like... I can't buy stuff off the shelf and put them on. I'm, um, so now my shopping cart is in my trailer because I pretty much bring the spare <laughs> of everything in there. Um, I know. So that was that was part of the reason that that uh, I knew Dragon. You know, I Dragon. I was hooked already after the first year. So um, I basically went 455, and then I cranked it up at the end of the year after doing Drag Week. I blew it up, and then I started down this uh, aftermarket aluminum <laughs> block, Pontiac block. And that was a total shit show. I, I blew that one up. I cracked it between every, behind every sleeve, between every cylinder. Um, oh God! That's a very nice, expensive. <coughs> it, it it works good if you want to mock something up. So you know it moves around a little bit and let people mock shit up with it. But, anyways, um, I blew it up like right before, like months before. Um, can't remember if it was 2016 or. 2017 might have been 2018 actually because i oh, think 18 yeah yeah and um <clears throat> so i went down to todd and i'm like that motor still sitting because he he was trying to sell it but he wasn't having any luck and so i said is that motor still sitting on the floor down there and he said <laughs> yep and i said uh, that gto of yours you still want it painted and and uh so we worked a deal and nice. we uh I, I painted with my uh, dad's help after like he, him and a buddy kind of did the finish work on it. And I did a bunch of the weld repair and, and I uh, walked away with the motor. So I had the pro charger set up. I ran one year, I think with the pro charger on it, but it was an F1C. It just wasn't big enough for the thousand cubes. So then, uh, <laughs> then I right. moved, then I moved to pro charger <laughs> or then I moved to a, a a turbo is set up after that. And I can't remember if, which was the horrible year where Bill said he wasn't going to uh, travel with me anywhere. If I kept doing uh 1400 feet down the track, cause I would be all over the whole track all the way. And... Oh yeah. It was scary. It was scary. Yeah. I think it must've been the turbo year because what I didn't realize is the turbo was making so much power. I'd be full extension all the way down the track and I never checked my wheel alignment at full extension. I only checked it like static. And, uh, when I jacked it up, after, I actually saw a picture, I actually saw a picture of the car and it was like fully hiked going through the traps. And I'm like, Hmm, I think and cause you get to about, I don't know, 900,000 feet and that thing would take you for a ride every time. So it wasn't, it wasn't this, it was like tow, it would tow in inch and a half and oh so wow were, okay if wow you were, an inch and a if, half if if you were had one wheel in the groove and one out of the groove you're going for a ride <laughs> like every time so uh um once i figured once i sorted that out uh things life got a whole lot better because i was i was letting off like <laughs> and dumping the chute early just about every pass because i was like oh, oh i'm going for a ride but yeah, we're gonna crash it. <laughs> we're gonna crash, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. 
And I think at that no, point, that's... I was still synchronized T56. Um, and I think like Bill was running like 920s, and I think I was 980s or something. Um, he, he had a pretty He's good margin right. on me. And, and then, I, then I had to solve that problem. Slowly. <laughs> yeah. And I know, I know there for a little while, um, <clears throat> cause there's a couple of 1320 videos. It was like running like a 903, like 902. It was so close to the eights and Kyle right. was like, you're going to run again. And I'm like, we're going to try, but it just, part of it was the clutch. Um, you know, I had that diaphragm, super aggressive diaphragm clutch on it. Same one I run yep. now. Um, and it was just not, it was just really hard to control. And that really, that precipitated me developing the clutch controller for that type of setup. Right. And then, and, and you guys at the time both had pretty aggressive diaphragm. Identical. Thing, right? it, yeah. So this is super funny. Like Rich drives to my house and we had both ordered the exact same clutch from black magic clutches. <clears throat> and because because of the timing on it, we had to pay to have the clutches overnighted from Ram to Black Magic to have them set up with the sintered iron stuff, <laughs> and then had to pay to have them overnighted to my house again to your house, dude. Like the overnight fees were more than we paid for the clutch. I mean, it's like a sixty-pound clutch that you're overnighting. It was ridiculous, <laughs> and we both we both got these clutches. They delivered them to my house, and we put them both in at the same time. <laughs> we were just like. <laughs> And you guys have really have never, had, like, yeah, a never lot of, speak of this again. <laughs> a a, so a lot of the clutch, um, a lot of your clutch program has followed each other. You guys have had aggressive diaphragm clutches with regular discs and aggressive diaph diaphragm clutches with uh, centered iron discs kind of at the same time. Although now Rich has got the, the fully adjustable clutch in his car, f like, finally, as of just this, this last year, right? Uh, well, no, it's it's probably three years, years now. Three yeah. years, okay. Yeah. All right. And and for a bunch of years, Rich was running the um, the clutch tamer, and that was that was yeah. kind of that that was sort of the, the 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 pre like party of the the clutch controller of the Bankship Billy. Um, you, you know, we were kind of, <laughs> and, and, you know, I don't know, I don't know how much you want to talk about it, but like. No, we I mean, can talk about it all. It's not. No, it was, it was super. So, so like Rich had or um, Bill had a a line lock. He had a line lock in his car in the clutch, and um, and it had a jet in it. I think well, it, it, was, it was it was essentially it was a Magnus control it, Magnus right. control valve, and it worked. It worked. It worked okay. It was okay, right? The problem was when it wasn't on, it still affected the clutch actuation. And so right. I tried to open up the hole in the the line lock because that's the way the fluid would flow when it wasn't on. And I ended up destroying the line lock. And even if you made the hole bigger, then it wouldn't work. It wouldn't. It just it just didn't work. But there were pieces about it that I liked, and right. pieces about it I didn't like. And then <clears throat> then I started messing around with with what where I'm at now. Yeah, and it was um, it, it it was a lot of trial and error instead you were like i'm doing this and i like i bought one i was like i'm gonna get a line lock i'm gonna do the same thing it's gonna be super cool um <laughs> and and this was when you know like you, you're chasing rich at the time and then you got a a leg up on rich and and i was your i was the i was the the disciple of the tremec trio um yes it was like yes. It, i blown them blown up the automatic in my car and i was like <laughs> Uh, I guess let's put a stick in it, and if we're gonna put a stick in it, let's just send it out and have it face plated now. Yeah. Yeah. And um, <laughs> if if this is the clutch that Bill uses, then that's the clutch that I'm gonna use. And you know, oh my God, he has a he has a line lock in his clutch. I'm gonna do the same the same <laughs> shit. And um, you know, because I you know, it's 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 a tough dude. Tough. T it's a tough world being a 12 second car, an 11 second car, in a eight second car friends category it's uh it's you know worst. so you just you just <laughs> do the same the thing that they do and you just go three seconds slower all the time yeah. but yeah yeah um but no that was that was um you know rich had a lot of success with the clutch tamer but i think it had the same kind of limitations it would just you know every gear 
it's doing something. There's just, you know, there's not a perfect solution. And that's inner, um, you know, inner the clutch controller. And, uh, and you've been doing really well with that thing. So talk to us about it. Yeah. So, um, yeah, there were some early iterations. You guys both, I mean, I used to call you and ask you questions about, okay, should it do this? Should it do that? But, you know, um, <clears throat> I was working with some off the shelf stuff for a little while and it just wouldn't do exactly what I wanted. And I talked to them about, you know, doing some modifications and they were not interested. Um, <clears throat> so I was like, screw it. I'm going to build my own controller. And so that's what I did. And, you know, I've talked about this before, but went through 139 versions of code before that thing worked. And it was, wow. dude, it was like 139 first dates. You're like, oh, this is the one. Uh, just, uh, just yeah. it 139 times and it would get close and then it would get away from it. And <clears throat> the electrical engineer that I was working with at the time, he didn't even know how to drive a stick. Like I had to walk him through how you drive a stick shift and how it works. So he would even understand what he was building code for. Right. Right. Um, but we, we got it. And then, um, yeah, I, go get some more. <clears throat> if you guys get real quick, if you guys don't know, rich doesn't drink very much. And so, Two Coronas. We're probably going to see Party Rich tonight. <laughs> anyway, um, sorry to interrupt. That's okay. So, so then I ran a, ran a prototype, um, and I had a few of them out there for other people to test. Um, and I'll be honest, um, it was a little disappointing uh, sending prototypes off, and then you know I had one or two people maybe that actually put a solid effort into it, and some not so much, but <clears throat> like I had great success with the prototype of my car. I won the stick car uh, takeover that year. Um, no, street car takeover. With, oh, sorry. Yeah, street car yeah, takeover. Yeah, it, it went, with, the, with the stick car class. Yeah, with the prototype, it went 878 at 164.9 at Bandamere. Like right. I was so happy. Like it was it was sweet. And then um, and then I did that next summer. I did three events. I did the. Um, both race weeks and the uh, what's the one? I'm trying to think which one it was. Thing of the open road. Nope, nope. It was before that. It was out in like Ohio and stuff. Um, oh, Midwest drags. Yes, did Midwest drags. Uh, won the stick class in that. Went my fastest pass ever at that. Was went 870 there. Nice. Um, and then just progressed, and then we got to production units. And just to learn some, just learn some more stuff. Uh, this past year, in all honesty, I struggled with it a bit, and I posted this on a YouTube video. Um, I just had trouble getting it to work right. I wasn't sure what was going on, and figured out that it was contamination, and it was because yep. the master cylinder was self-destructing itself and pumping a bunch of debris in there. So we've got that fixed now. Um, so yeah, this year, this year is going to be. Some 130, 60 foots, buddy. At a boy. And if you, if you guys haven't paid attention, uh, the too long didn't read on that world is the Tilton master cylinder is a is a much better master cylinder than the Willwood. Um, yeah, and it's about three times as much money. But I right, you know, pay right. for it. So no, you always get what you pay for. Um, I've got a Tilton in my in my Malibu. Um, they've got a kit for a Willwood to put in the Cadillac, um, but the guy won't switch to a Tilton. And I want to have the same of everything. So yeah, that's I'd like great. to have one rebuild kit for two master cylinders. So at some point, hopefully he's got that available for the Cadillac. But he you won't know, do that. yeah, and it's funny you say that about having the mm -hmm. same thing. So over the years, as Rich and I have changed our programs, mm -hmm. um, there's been some pretty intentional stuff. So like our valve trains are all Crower. He's wearing the sweatshirt tonight and, and they are awesome. They support you know, they're fantastic, but like not the actual rock rounds and stuff, but all the bearings, the cups, all of that are the same for Rich and I. So I have right. spares. Um, <clears throat> there's a funny story. Um, I can tell about a guy that drives a black Mustang with a big blower in it, <laughs> Royce. Mm -hmm. um, yep. And we can dive into that one a little bit too. But uh, <clears throat> like even so far as the sensors, you know, we run cherry sensors in a number of spots in the car and we have made sure the, the cherry sensors in his car and the ones in mine use the same weather pack plug and they're both wired the same. Right. <laughs> because I carry spares, he carries spares. But if something happens and he needs a spare for mine, 
it's going to plug right in because they're wired the same. Hell yeah. So, yeah. so we, we've, we've tried to plan ahead as, as, you know, as much as we can. Yes. But, Sometimes I'll bring my transmission all the way from Canada just so if Bill needs any parts off it, he can take them. That's, that's happened before. Funny. That's it's happened it's before. Happened. <laughs> <It's> happened. <laughs> but I mean, you also bring it in case you break everything, oh, yeah. which you as well. So, I mean, you know, there's that too. <laughs> that might be the primary reason, but. <laughs> oh, I, I do. It, I, I want to talk more because um, you, you've you got the, uh, the Billy Button. Um, I want to hit that before we're done, and we yeah. we're uh, we're meeting up next month uh, here in just a couple of weeks, actually. Yes, yes. to do uh, to do some cool stuff with the the Billy Button, and you got yep. an award for that and whatever. But I want to I want to come back around to that. Okay, but I want to uh, I want to run through real quick um, some more tips and tricks for stick shift dudes that are watching. Okay, um, you guys have recently both made the switch over to radials. How's that been going for you? And we'll start with Rich uh, with the breakage um, that you know that you got right when you first uh, screwed with yeah, the, the stuff. Actually, but like, what do you guys think about stick shifting with a radial? Yeah, the first the first time I tried them was King of the Open Road that uh, Jared Holt put on, and um, I don't know if it was the radials that broke it or not, but. Uh, on what at that event, I broke the transmission and the rear end in one pass. Um, it actually broke the clutch fork in the transmission and locked it in two gears, and then uh, proceeded to to stop broke, the drive shaft. Broke the shift fork, Rich. Uh, yeah, sorry the the fork in the transmission for yeah. yeah you said the you said the clutch fork. Oh yeah. yeah, three, four, two, three. I can't remember. But it'll, as soon as I went to check to see if there was another gear, I found it. Uh, the only problem was it was still in the the previous the gear. other one. Yeah, <laughs> and and so, so when that, it's trying to do two gears at the same time, it doesn't. It's a, it doesn't it's a drive drive. Thing, actually. Right. Um, yeah, and it stops. And, Hard uh, stop. <laughs> it, it ripped the yoke right off the differential, it, and uh, it was pretty funny because Michael Narks was there and. There was a bunch of people there, and uh, I had a spare transmission. I had a spare nine-inch center section. Um, I did not have a spare drive shaft, and when the lady was kicking my drive shaft off the track, I was like, "Whoa, wait, I need that." <laughs> That's, That's all I got in the whole world. <laughs> so, so, because of that, I actually carry a spare drive shaft now too, just in case I break one of them. But, uh, um, so. That was my first experience with radials. It was going, I would say it went okay. And then uh, I was really trying to get ready for sick week because the first year or the first time I went to sick week in 2022, I went with slicks and um, the track is too good for slicks. And like that picture you know, right I think, there. I think, uh, yeah, yeah, Jeff Lutz. Uh, Brett LaSalle is a perfect example of that. Like that, that track with that track was made for Brett. It was not made for Jeff. So everybody with big tires and they, and Tom and the crew does a great job of trying to figure out how to detune the track, get those guys right. to go down. Right. Um, <clears throat> and then 23 and 24, I used radios both times. And uh, yeah, it was, it was game changer. I still think that, uh, um, I need I, I need to do some more work, but I still think that I should be able to get them working on an okay track. But time will tell. I've I've got a little trip uh, planned that we can talk about uh, when you want coming up here. That it's going to be pretty interesting to see if I can make the radials work. So hell yeah, I can't wait. I can't wait. <laughs> um, Bill, radials. Yeah, so I I did try them. I actually bought Rich's old ones. Uh, cause they wouldn't fit. They were brand new, but they wouldn't fit his car. So I got them. Um, and the first, the first couple times I tried them, um, I clearly didn't have a stiff enough shock. Um, just ran out of rebound and it was separating so hard and so fast that it would come out, but then it would separate and take the, the momentum would take everything upward and it would spin and then it would right. rattle the tire and it shook the car so hard. Like, <laughs> yeah, it, it, it'll cause body damage. Like, so um, this past, this winter, like now, I sent the shocks back to Menser 
and my 40 clicks is now 20 clicks. So they're way stiffer than oh, wow. they were. Um, we'll see. We'll see if I try them. Um, I am. I, I always buy brand new slicks at the beginning of every season, um, and I have some now. Uh, I don't have quite the data acquisition that Rich has. He has shock sensors on his car. I don't know if I'm going to get that in here before we start getting crazy because I'm still putting the motor back together. I'm pretty close. I'll probably have it back before this coming week. Um, when so. you get you get older, Bill, you can step up to the mega squirt to the big boy stuff. Oh, <laughs> okay, okay, thanks. <laughs> from Polly, you can. Yep, yep, from He's Holly. giving you permission. <clears throat> That's this, they, this uh, is yeah, this is rich one and a half beers in, by the way. That's what I've been waiting for. That's what I've been waiting for is his blessing. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh but yeah, um we'll see. I, I may try him again. Um we'll we'll just have to see. But uh my car works pretty well on the radial. Um I mean you can see it wrinkling up. That was that picture is from Kotor where Rich blew up his car, and that track was was working. Like it was pretty good track. They did a great right. job of prepping it. Um, but uh, yeah, and and those stiffer shocks are going to help even my rate, my uh, slick program too. Because it was, I just couldn't hit it with that much power off the line because it would just it would separate so fast that it would come out nice and hard, but then it would spin. Um, okay. But now that I'll be able to control that rebound, I think we'll be able to launch it with probably thirty two pounds of boost. 32 pack of <laughs> <Holy moly. laughs> No, if, if I could leave on six to eight, that would be pretty great. Uh, because yeah. typically I think the most I've ever left on was about four would have been like the most ever, but usually it's like two. But but I never used boost builder or never had. And with those little turbos, I mean literally once the clutch is out, that, that boost go, curve is straight up in the air. Right. Like sometimes I'll see 17 pounds in first gear, which is, which is what I want. I mean, I want to see as much power as quickly as possible, as we all know, that's what it, that's what it needs. So, yeah, I mean, all the power all the time. Right now, if you can put that's it right. down, that's what you want. So, that's right. so yeah, yeah. So we'll see. And and really the key, and, and I think we talked about this a little <clears throat> bit, it's, is clutch management. Like you can do it. 100%. You just, it, something's going to take the abuse in, in yep. the, the line. And yep. if it's a biased tire, the tire takes the abuse easily. Um, they recover well. They, they do a lot of stuff, but they don't have – there's a lot of stuff that the radials do a lot better. Yeah, so, they, they will stick way better, but you have to have slip in the clutch in order to do it because that, that radial tire, you can't slip it because it just – it won't recover. It rattles the car so hard. It just – it's abuse. I mean, it breaks yeah. off. It causes body damage. Like, it's rough. Totally. So, yeah. Yep. Yeah. If you want to talk tips, I would say, you know, the first, like for quite a while, that the trick for both of us was enough air pressure that the tire turns or centered iron discs so you could get the clutch to, to turn. Because we both ran, you know, well, I was, I ran a synchronized transmission for quite a while, even with a T56. Um, but I had a uh, RXT, but I got two centered iron discs for it. Right. That, that was probably one of the mistakes I made is when I put in that one at Bill's um, because the other one seemed to be working pretty good and I thought I would upgrade and uh, <laughs> right. I needed to do it. that thing was a hammer and Bill and I were slipping on the way up to the line we we're trying to figure it out because it would it would slip on us if it wasn't hot and yeah we we both struggled right <laughs> off the bat but the big change I think for both of us um obviously clutch slippage and then when we started clutchless shifting that's when we went from nine o's down to pretty consistently being in the eights like yeah, yeah. That, um, that did make a difference for sure it was seven miles an hour difference for me in the eight holy cow in the eighth, in the eighth? yeah because i was all done shifting right um in the eighth and uh yeah i was like it was it was a game changer for me we both have different strategies the way we do it <laughs> But, um, yeah, it just – you can just knock so much time. And so when you see a guy like John Puckett, who, who was listening, I don't know if he still yeah, is he's, he, Yeah, he, and I've had him on before. Yeah. So, yeah he, like he was – he's still using his uh, using his clutch and still running in the eights. So that's that's 
pretty wild. Like his, I don't yeah, think that's, gang, that's gangster stuff right there. Yeah, I don't yeah. think his transmission yeah. space plated either. I think his is still synchronized. Mm. So, yeah. yeah, I think it's like a box stock Magnum. Yeah, he's a he's a that bad is. man. Yeah, it is. Now he's a and, little lighter than Bill and I. So I'm that. Well, I'll give he, him found, a... he found the healthiest way to drop a hundred plus pounds off the car. <laughs> yeah, he did. <laughs> yes, he did. Yes, not <laughs> drinking. Not this. No. That's Coors right. heavies. <laughs> exactly. Um, so let's swing back around real quick, Bill. And um, dude, you so you came up with the Billy button. Um, so you're you're expanding the uh, the bank shift Billy Enterprise to the Billy <laughs> right. button. And right. this thing, this thing is crazy wireless button setup that you yeah. have PRI and you you actually you won you won an award at PRI. For this thing talk well, talk to I, us about the billy button you actually yeah. won so actually the award was for the clutch controller okay um, we did win best new product award for 2023 for the drivetrain division for the clutch controller and then we also won judge's choice award for the clutch controller got it and th that was the first pri show ever I, I you know didn't go there to expect to win anything and we did and right super super stoked super excited and then we unveiled at the uh, show the Billy button. That's right. Um, and there was quite a lot of drama leading up to that, but we made it. We got there. And it's wireless buttons for the steering wheel. So, and there's another part to it, which we'll talk about. But basically, anybody who has buttons on the steering wheel has to deal with that coiled cable. And right. especially in drag and drive, it gets in the way. You know it breaks and they don't know it until they go up do their burnout they go to hit their trans brake to back up and oh guess what it doesn't work Shit. now they've thrown a pass away because yep. they have to foot break it it's just a mess and then i've heard stories people turning corners trying to turn off the track the cord hits the key it turns off the car locks the steering wheel it gets it's just a mess right and so right. this is a wireless setup for those buttons um and it has also transitioned into now what we're going to be calling the Billy Bar, which mm -hmm. is a four button switch panel for latched buttons um, mm -hmm. that can be used in a race car. But that market is much larger. I mean, we're talking oh, yeah. four wheel drives, commercial trucking, boats, RVs, anything. And, and it eliminates like, I'm going to get the elevator pitch out here, but it eliminates <laughs> like 60% of the wiring and 80% of the time to install it. So you've got the receiver, you wire it to the battery and there's four 30 amp outputs. The whole thing is protected internally. Right. It's hundred percent solid state. The fuses are auto resetting and you just power it right to, if you have a Jeep or whatever, or a race car, four 30 amp outputs, you just wire straight to that and that's it. You're done. The buttons, all of that is hundred percent wireless and they'll be rechargeable with a USB-C Sweet. And, and the battery is of such a capacity that it's probably going to last for a year at least before you even have to charge it again. That's sweet. So that's in a nutshell. That's that's what I've been busy working on. It's it's and it's it's something that's has been tried before in the industry unsuccessfully, and yeah. and you figured it out. Like it's the, the, it's got no latency. <laughs> the the connection is really good. There's a video of uh, Tina Pierce. And she's yeah. all the way across P uh, at PRI. And she's all the way to that. I mean, probably a, an eighth mile away, <laughs> whacking <laughs> buttons, and it's yeah. working. Maybe um, not quite that far, but yeah, it's got really good range. Um, the latency is sixty-five milliseconds, so that is point zero six five. Mm -hmm. And for people wondering what that is, mm -hmm. uh, the blink of an eye is somewhere between point one and point four seconds. And the typical reaction time for a human being is 0.25, so 250 milliseconds. This thing is 65 milliseconds. Right. Like you can't even really detect the delay. It's that quick. It's awesome. It's super so, cool. It's super cool. So I'm excited. Yeah, thank you. I'm really excited. Um, I'm actually going to be uh, help, helping you with a little bit of the advertising for it here in the next couple of weeks. And uh, yep. Yep. I'm, I'm going to be the antagonist. That's right. That's right. Really excited. We're going to be shooting. Uh, we're going to be, I'm going all in on this. Let's just say that um, the, the digital clutch control market is very, very small and very, very niche, all things considered. This market is massive. I mean, there's, I don't know, 10 million 
uh, commercial trucks listed, you know, registered right. in the United States. And that's just that one market. Um, right. So There's side by side <clears throat> is huge right now. Like it, it's yeah. So, so we're going to be doing a whole bunch of filming for video shorts, longer, longer videos in the nature of like the Dr. Swat Squatch. Mm -hmm. So, the Mr. Cool type videos, the yeah. squatty potty, the mm -hmm. poopery, the the funny type ads. That's what we're going to be doing, and yeah. you're going to be seeing a lot of the Bank Ship Billy character and some of his crew. Hell yes, <laughs> so hell yes! It's going to be a lot of fun. It's going to be a lot um, of fun. Jesse Hazlitt has a question that I'm sure you get a lot. Um, <clears throat> two people using Billy buttons, one in one lane, one in the other lane. I'm whacking buttons. Is it working on his car? Yeah, so Jesse, um, it it will randomly select addresses for the buttons out of sixteen point seven million possible addresses. So if you're concerned about that, then you should probably go buy a lottery ticket because your odds are probably better. Somebody won a billion dollars <clears throat> just recently, like That's one awesome. billion dollars. I mean, good for them. One jillion gajillion dollars. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, so um, yeah, I think it's it's extremely um, unlikely, and not not for this to turn into a huge ad for this because we're going to cover a lot of this. But we've we specifically chosen chipsets that are engineered to be very very secure. Um, the random mm -hmm. addresses um, for, I mean. There is a possibility, a 16.7 million to one chance that you're going to have an interference with the guy next to you. Um, if we sell that many and that's a possibility, that's going to be a big problem. It's going to be a great right. problem. I mean, damn. <laughs> damn, <Shucks. Yeah. laughs> um, if so, but, Maybe so, if someone has 16.7 million buttons in their car. That is that is a fact. That is a fact. So, <laughs> um, so yeah, hope, hopefully that answers the question. But, you know, and – Trying to do just like the uh, bank ship Billy, trying to do as much of this as possible in the U.S. And like for example, the buttons that I'm using, they're from auto manufacturing. They're military spec buttons. I mean, they're buttons you're going to find in a commercial aircraft, fighter jet, any of the buttons that you order right now from Summit or Jegs. Those high tactile buttons, those are auto buttons. They're made in the U.S. They're very expensive. I wish they weren't, but you know, that that's going to drive the cost of this up a bit, but it, it's some of the best quality stuff you can get. So yeah, it's going to, yeah. Be I mean, if you want it and want it to work, then that's, yeah, that's what you need. Yeah, totally. So hell yes. Um, so let's talk about where your rides are right now. So rich, if you had to, and, and we just got done with, uh, with sick week, not long ago, but you had to jump in your car and go to a drag and drive could you do it right now yes sir a boy i just uh i just took the winter tires off and put the summer tires on today um <laughs> uh, i left the mud flaps on because i'm uh, heading on a trip in april here and the roads are probably still gonna be pretty bad but um yeah yeah in fact i am leaving in 10 days april april 9th <clears throat> My brother and I are heading heading back across the border to where all the fun happens. You're going to Yellow Belly, right? Yes, sir. I am going to a Tom Gunner's uh, or Jimmy Dale's small tire gangster race at uh, Yellow Belly. And if you don't know what track that is, definitely look it up. It uh, it is it's, this. Yes, yeah, it's, it's Yellow Belly. I mean, yeah, you, it's this yeah. outlaw. <laughs> crazy looking track with 12 foot fences um like it and it looks like you're racing in a tunnel so i saw a couple of videos and i put it on the bucket list and uh that was only like last year so my bucket list doesn't seem to last long before i'm uh <laughs> emptying the bucket but um <clears throat> i'm uh super stoked that i don't know how many people um saw it at sick week but uh jimmy dale and mo dale came to sick week and he got burnt really bad. And, and, uh, so going down there is partly to support him too. I don't think he needs me to support him though. I think, uh, he's doing a great job with advertising. I've heard all kinds of rumors that, you know, big chief might show up 
um, nice. all, the street, all the street racing channel, um, Tony and Tess from Miss Midnight Maverick. Uh, they're, they're showing up. We're going to have a good time. Hell yeah. Hell so, yeah. Uh, so I have another question. Yeah. <laughs> you, uh, do they reinforce the cage uh, limits at that track? They don't reinforce. In, in, not not, not rein, do, do they enforce? They don't. Like, you have to enforce first to yeah, reinforce. Yeah, oh, yeah. all right. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think that. I don't think they have a tech guy. Also, we might uh, with your with your newly dry deck setup, we might see some uh, might so, see some totally new numbers with the first digit, right? Here's uh, here's what hopefully is going to happen is uh, I'm going on, so I'm just going to be straight up. So I'm going Thursday as a test day. And I'm going to make some passes down the track. And based on that, I'm going to decide if I'm going to wad my shit up on the <laughs> next two days, then I might, I, I might make right. a different decision. Um, but then the Sunday Tom was, we're trying to work out a track rental at a track that's prepped really well. So my, my goal is to go down there and put more of a gap on you, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> so like an eight, I'm I'm gonna turn it up to 20 pounds and see what it does. See if it'll go like 835 or or something around there. Um, just because I know it's gonna be a while before you can make a pass and and uh, just help. You can just keep buying parts. <laughs> oh boy, you're just making this decision to have to upgrade these turbos even more and more of a problem. So um, can I? Can I tell a quick story about this? You can't this tell, funny. real quick. Yellow it isn't so you're gonna which track are you gonna rent? Because Yellow Belly's eighth mile, right? It is, yeah. And it's okay. It, there, there is like no track equipment. Like it oh yeah, it is it is a total gangster track. Like uh yeah, yes. but it's prepped really well. Like I when I uh when I talked to Tom, he was you know, I said slicks or radials, and he's like, bring your radials, like they'll hook. And okay. uh, Gideon? At least for the at least for the first half to get a lot of speed up, <laughs> and then it seems like everyone <laughs> loses traction after that. So, <laughs> um, oh. yeah, um, it, I don't know which track it is that they were talking about renting. Um, I have to check with Tom, but uh, should be a good time. Hell yes! So, um, so this is really your story. This, yeah, this is so funny. So, Rich was at Drag Week. No, I'm sorry, Sick Week, and. I was actually on a uh, vacation uh, first time in Hawaii and day one rich runs 861 and I'd been 870 and prior to that he'd been 875 and I was like I was pretty proud of him I was like that's freaking gangster that's awesome yeah and then day two I, I don't know if he texted me or how day three he goes 851 right and I immediately so I cracked my block um, on the drive of the last week, so, uh, race week. So my block and heads and everything were at the machine shop. And I looked at my fiance and she's like, what? And I went rich. All right. I picked up the phone. I called the machine shop. I go, what's it look like to O-ring this block? And they said, oh, that's perfect timing. We haven't touched the heads yet. And Courtney, my fiance looks at me and she goes, what? And I go, rich just went 851. And she goes, oh, <laughs> <laughs> And I said, I might have to upgrade the turbos too. <laughs> and it's like, yeah, no, it's, yeah, <laughs> that's where the conversation stopped. But <laughs> it, was pretty, it was so funny because this is, I, I literally, we're on, big, we're on vacation and I'm like, picked up the phone. I'm like, I called Troy Kaiser. I'm like, hey man, what's it look like to o ring the block? He's like, it's no big deal. I'm like, let's do it. <laughs> let's go. Let's make it happen. Yeah. Right, right. Because so, wow. Rich, yours turned way up, and and you had it on a dyno, and it made, I mean, like fourteen and change, right? On like a, a ton of boost, right? It, uh, at seventeen pounds. So what I ran at seventeen. <laughs> 17, 17, 17 pounds is what it made fourteen eighty five, and that's what I was running at sick week this year. So, um, how much can it, that thing run? Well, so you know the uh, Trans Am, uh, Nick, that black the, Trans the Am? Black, yeah, the 78. It looks like the Bandit car. Yeah. Yeah, he's running 22 pounds, Kometic head gaskets on a NA or a, on a stock block. <clears throat> um, and so not dry deck. So 
honestly, it could probably do 25. I don't know if the uh, rest of the, <laughs> the uh, drive train can take it, but I'm going to try 20 pounds this year, I think is probably as hard as I'll push it. Um, 20 pounds, every PSI seems to be about 50 horsepower. So another 150, that was the difference between 23 and 24 was two pounds of boost. And it went 875 to 851. So seems to like and, it. And your best mile an hour, you trapped like 166 and change. Yeah. Yeah, that's it's so awesome. It's which is so which awesome. is crazy to think. I mean, it wasn't it way? It's 39, 39.50 to, to four thousand pounds, depending on how much gas is in the pump gas tank. But that's yeah, she's a she's a heavy girl. That's a yeah, yeah. And and the fair lane's not a lightweight by any means. No, um again, depending on the fuel load, it's thirty 36 80 90 right to 37 it's right in that range it's going to be a little more now this new gen 2 dart block is 12 pounds heavier oh man but you <laughs> probably lost 12 pounds because you're yoked af <laughs> no <laughs> no it's going to be it's probably going to be 37 ish now just because yeah 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 <laughs> um so the technical problems continue you guys and i apologize for that somehow i think i think what happened is i blew up my hub and i've got a hub that feeds my other lap or my other uh monitor here and it also it also charges my computer and it wasn't charging so when i was all up inside the uh, camera that was me getting the charger set up i'm on bare bones here i'm on like <laughs> i mean we're yeah it, we're in bad shape right now but um circle in the drain but I think we're good. I got to charge in. I mean, the thing was like, hey, do you want me to go to low power mode? And I was like, never. What are you talking <laughs> about? Oh, my God. It's not low <laughs> power. It's not plugged you? in. <clears throat> Reggie oh, Moore's man. in the house, too. Look at that. Reggie we got, Moore. Okay. We got Reggie yeah. Moore. We got Philip Thomas is watching. Nice. Oh, Rovic. I, I can't even see who these. It says Facebook user says, sell me your turbos, Bill. I don't even know who that is. <laughs> That's Aaron. Was, or that's Aaron Trevor Brandon. Aaron oh, Trevor Brandon. Oh. Aaron Trevor Brandon. Yeah, they want your turbos. No problem. Perfect. Perfect. There you, yeah, you no got problem. them sold. I think the Trevor mm -hmm. part of the Aaron Trevor probably wants it more than the other one. Yeah, Tre Trevor <laughs> wants them more than Aaron does. Would be my guess. Well, maybe maybe he wants one and she wants the other. Maybe. I mean, whatever you have too, you can do whatever that's, you want with them. That is that is fact. Yes. <laughs> I don't know if you guys yeah. been. Keeping up with Reggie Moore, but have you, have you seen that Corvette he's working on? The one that's got the, the hatchback on the back? Yes. He's working on it for his buddy. That looks cool. That's it's crazy. Wild, dude. It's wild stuff. Wild stuff. That's that's All Reggie. right. I'm going to get into some of my questions. This is a, this is much like your clutch burners. And, we, and Rich just finished his second Corona. Should I get a third? Ooh. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's Friday night. It it's is still Friday, Friday in Canada, right? It, yeah. Well, and yes. I don't know how the metric system pans out. <laughs> hopefully, exactly. Hopefully, hopefully, your wife is drinking some upstairs too. That's <laughs> that right. Nice, but I and know. and you guys know that it's Good Friday, and if it's payday on Good Friday, it's Great Friday. Oh. Okay, well, I'm going to get another beer. Then. All right. If you're going to get one, I'm going to get one. Pause one second. We'll be right back. Bill's going to have his Guinness. Let's yeah. make this wild. Let's All get right. weird. All right. So I'll start with a little commentary while the two boys are gone. <clears throat> this uh, podcast, Adam Dory, I think it's uh, – that's cool. So I guess you got to drink a little. But it's uh, – this is a good time. I want to thank him for having us on here. Yeah, much appreciated. Oh, look at. Okay. Are you get you getting hammered there, get Rich? Two. I'm getting hammered. <laughs> I only have two left. He's, He's opening it with Canadian a Canadian beer opener over there. <laughs> That's right. He's getting hammered. He's getting hammered. <laughs> I only had two left, so I guess we're gonna do two. Like, let's, <laughs> let's get wild. Nice. Metric Canada is three hours ahead. Drink. All right. That's right. That's right. <laughs> oh man. Here we go. Good times. Okay, so a few of my questions we're going to start with, and we're going to keep uh, keep on rocking. If you are in the comments, um, feel free to throw some questions out. 
car related or not, um, we're getting we're getting loose. It's Friday night. Let's make it happen. That's cool. Nice. So I got a question for you, Trent. Adam. Mm-hmm. Tell us about the Honda. Mm. What'd you get? What are you doing to it? What was wrong? With okay, it? so there's a backstory to the Honda. Yeah. So I had a um, back in the day. I had a red Honda Civic wagon. It was a six speed manual. It was the the first six speed Honda that they made. And the the six speed was because it had a granny gear. It had a super low gear that was like five sixty to one. Wow. And it would lock the four wheel drive in in that super low gear. And I got really good at driving it actually. And I put a lightning flywheel in it. That thing was cool as hell. Sold it for way too little. Whatever. Um, but I so I picked up this Honda. I when I lost my job, I realized that everything I have is ridiculous to like <laughs> to own for a cheap for you know for for a poor person. Um, I've got a I've got a pickup truck. I've got the Cadillac and I've got the Malibu, all which run at the moment. Wow, uh, which is pretty That's amazing. <clears throat> but yeah. you know, rather than take my time and um and and tune on the Malibu and make it perfect. I bought a Honda because I'm a moron. <laughs> um, so this was my friend's in-laws Honda. It's a it's a 91 Honda Civic wagon. It's got an automatic in it. Um, is what it is. They're just it's a super rare, really weirdo. They made them from 85 to 91. And 88 to 91, they sold a hand, you know, like a few of them, but they're, it's an all wheel drive. It's got a viscous coupling in the rear, the rear differential or in the, in the drive shaft. So if the front tires are spinning and the rears are not, it couples the drive shaft together and makes the rears get power. Um, they're super crazy and neat and rare and awesome. And I bought it for, I had to buy them a drive shaft for their, 2009 Honda Pilot. And they said, if you can get me a drive shaft for this thing, you can have this Civic. Sweet. Cool. So um, Nick Ball, um, who's done King of the Open Road, and he's done some uh, some race week stuff. And he's also my buddy's ne- nephew, um, went down and picked this thing up for me and met me in Lingle, Wyoming with it. And um, I had do full they like plans. To, do they like to mingle in Lingle? They do. Um, they have the. They have a bar called Bitches. It's Bitches <laughs> Saloon. It yeah. used to be the county morgue in <laughs> um, in in whatever county it is there in Wyoming, and its claim to fame, which they've gotten rid of, is they used to have Polaroid cameras in the men's and women's room, and you were almost like you were. It was your duty to take nudes. And this is before there was like a nudes thing (laughs) and they had a slot between the two bathrooms and you would slide your Polaroid into the other gender bathroom for someone else to post on the wall. So (laughs) the walls were covered with naked women or men, depending on which bathroom you were in. (laughs) Um, It became a problem because people would stop with their kids and bring them to the bathrooms (laughs) And then have to explain to them why there were a bunch of naked pictures in either of the bathrooms at bitches. Awesome. But it is my uh, it's the it's halfway between my house and Morrison and Rapid City. It's exactly three hours um, into a six hour trip, so it's a perfect place to stop and get a burger. They have local um, raised beef they get from ranchers in the area, so it's never been frozen. It's it's awesome. It's a suit. It's a super like hole in the wall. They have a drive through liquor store. Literally, Somebody literally crashed the through the liquor store trying to do the drive through and they had to be shut down for like months. And <laughs> anyway, so they're back running, but he, yeah, we met in Lingle, swapped this car. And my plan was to be hundred percent honest with you. I was going to part it out because I was like, I just need money. And I, if I can get this thing for nothing, um, the four wheel drive stuff is worth minimum three thousand dollars because you can bolt it into another civic that yeah. you like and you get a four-wheel drive uh either crv or pilot slash element 
depending on what engine you have transmission and you can make yeah. it work with everything I've got nice. um, in, in Integra's <clears throat> and Civics. So, and they bolt right in. So that was the initial plan. Um, I decided I got it back and it was too nice to, to part out. So I thought I was like, well, I'll just take the head off. Cause it, it had a head gasket that was gone for sure. Um, I'll take the head off. I'll do the head job on it. I worked at a Honda dealer in that era, um, in like 96, 97, 98. So I worked on those. So there it's like, I know them easy. Yeah. yeah. No problem. Like, yeah, I, it's like gravy. Um, I took the head off and it had, uh, all, all the rings were pinched in one of the cylinders. It had gotten so hot. It had pinched oh. the top ringland and um and jacked up one of the pistons a little bit so i ringed it and bearinged it and i'm waiting on the head and um i destroyed the transfer case taking it apart slash putting it together so oh, i'm waiting on like, one of those you worked on these it's just gravy right <laughs> it's just yeah. easy. these are these things are so <laughs> rare the first one that i took apart was mine <laughs> when we did a clutch in it Okay. Okay. And so this will be the second time I did it and I did it wrong. Can you repair that thing or what? No. Um, I, I ended up finding one, so I'm just going to replace it with parts, but it's a car. So now I have a CTSV that they made 7,000 of, and I have a four wheel drive civic that they made about 14,000 of, but you know, 35 years ago. So, yeah. um, you know, I'm an idiot basically is is the uh, what it comes down to but the goal is to have something that'll get 30 ish miles a gallon 35 miles a gallon that's cheap to own that i can drive 12 months out of the year and, and you know what that's cool drink <laughs> giddy up that's right <laughs> <laughs> okay <clears throat> questions what is the largest thrash that you've been a part of Personally, personal, probably, oh, largest thrash. Like in a short time period, it was changing a head gasket, helping change a head gasket on Rich's car overnight. And they got to watch me falling asleep while standing up. You fell asleep standing up. That's right. Yeah, I sure do. <laughs> that was at, was that at Tulsa? I think it was. <clears throat> I think it was, yeah. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah and, was... and Finnegan was doing a drive shaft in his car mere yards from you. Uh, that it's was possible. different. That was that was a harmonic balancer that day. Oh, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Rich. Uh, for me, honestly, I, I would have to say, I would have to categorize it as an event. Like, my first Dragon Drive was the was the craziest thrash between we changed the camshaft in my brother's car before we left Canada. <clears throat> we, uh, we did Bill's clutch. What day was that? Was that day three? Uh, no, I think it was day two. <clears throat> oh yeah. Day two. And my dad had... that was when I met you, that's when I met you. Yeah. I mean, day one of drag week, um, we were traveling. I can't remember the guy's name in a Nova, <clears throat> but he had a crank trigger issue. We pulled over. It's 113 degrees outside or something. It was brutal in 2013. And um, we're on the side of the road with him. And uh, I can't remember what the other guy's name was either, but they had a, a, an orange Camaro. And they, you know, he's literally waving this crank trigger on the side of the road. And, uh, this guy whips in front of us and, and he's got a crank trigger. So he's back at the Nova with us and, and the orange car catches fire. So then there's Perfect. like a football, a football pass going on with a fire extinguisher flying through the air. <laughs> and then uh, day two is Bill's clutch. Day three, my brother hit both walls um, at Indy. And then, uh, you know, it was just, it was just chaos. And on the way home, my brother lost a bearing in his axle, <clears throat> like that whole trip should have convinced oh. us to never Wait. do another, another dragon drive. Like, Wait, and you forgot on the way down 
he had to change a camshaft in his car on the way down. Yeah. Yeah. Did, did that not come through? Yeah. That's what I said before we, yeah, before we even left Canada. Yeah. We had to, we had on the side of the road outside of Lethbridge, we had to change a camshaft on the side of the road. So it, yeah, it was, who the <clears throat> was that? That was Bob's Mustang. Okay. Yeah. And the same one that he hit both walls with. So, uh, and then so, Finnegan, like we worked all day to get Bob's car going again, like that, thrash we were i don't know what time it was but we ended up traveling with bailey and uh <clears throat> i think that's where for me it was just surreal like here we are um cruising with bailey he's doing like 80 miles an hour towing a trailer in in um one that would have been his orange camaro yeah it's his six seconds car yeah it was just a whole, it was just an insane event from the get go. Like it, uh, it should have convinced us that this is insane. Never yeah. ever do it again. Yeah. Ever. I, the, yeah, I got that out of the bucket the bucket list. To get, I could take it off. No, nope. fell in love with it. That was a problem. Hell yes. So I think Trevor posted on here. We kind of forgot about that King of the Open Road. So at that event, I cracked the frame on my car, unibody, whatever. Had to have that welded. Rich blew up the transmission and rear end in his car, which he already talked about. And Trevor scattered the motor in his car all at the same event. Nice. <laughs> it's it a pretty rough deal. <laughs> yeah, no good. Someone was asking earlier what rear end gears you guys both use. And I think Rich answered, he's got 350s in his car. Yeah. Yeah, and I run 370s. Um and I see somebody posted a question. What are your thoughts on cryogenic treatment of transmission mm -hmm. gears? Uh, we've actually both done it. Um, and mine too, actually. The Malibu one has got the cryogenic. Yeah, I, I think it does tend to add to durability. Um, but I think the process that you have done really matters uh, because there are some places that will just basically freeze them and that's it. Uh, the, the place that I've taken my stuff to they do parts for Boeing. Um, so they have a very regimented, they control how quickly it cools, how long it holds it there, and then how how fast it warms it up. And then they elevate the temperature for a period of time. Um, and I thought all of that was going to help stop twisting input shafts. It didn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> but but I think that it does, there's actually some some really good trivia. Do you know how they discovered cryogenics and why it works so well? No, from the space program. So when these capsules would go up to space and come back, you know, they're doing uh, all this testing on the stuff coming back and the metals exhibited completely different properties after being essentially cryogenically frozen in space coming back. And that's kind of how it was discovered. Huh? So good. There's your, you. there's your daily nerdy bill. Oh, that's cool. Cool. That is cool. That's, That's kind of cool. cool, I guess. Um, Jesse Haslett, who has not come in late, he's been here all the whole time, just wants to know when you guys are changing the autos. Um, yeah, I don't plan to be gay ever. <laughs> nope, <neither. laughs> it's it's like Frank Romano said, like, I might do that if I had a frontal lobotomy. <laughs> but only, like, maybe. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. Oh man. And yeah, oh, Jason right. wants to know if doing parts it for Boeing Dude, is a good here's thing. Here's the deal. Boeing is a <laughs> I think they're a great company. They've got a bad rap. They've got, you know, when tires fall off the airplane, that's not Boeing's fault. That's a maintenance problem. And that's got nothing to do with Boeing. I used door, to work on the door falling yeah. out. <laughs> that was an outside vendor. It wasn't Boeing that built that. But I might I be mean, a little I mean, I used to work on Boeing 727s. Those are old school planes. And, but, and to be uh, honest, I, I've i flown Boeings since all of this has been going on and I'm not dead. If, if, it, if it ain't Boeing, I ain't going. That's the saying. I mean, I don't care. I'll, <laughs> I'll ride an Airbus too, but it, yeah. the noises, the hydraulic noises just get me a little bit. Um, yeah, but okay. thankfully, I've got the Clutch Burners podcast going in the noise canceling. <laughs> perfect. Yeah, that's perfect. That's so perfect. it's all good to go. Jason at War Performance says that he's got purses waiting for you. So. Excellent. Excellent. I see. <laughs> yeah. I see Vince Rui there too. That's, yeah, that's good. Vince. That's Vince good. Rui says that he's not gay, just slow. <laughs> yeah, that's okay. <laughs> um, somebody wanted to know what your next events are, and uh, and I think Rich, you you 
uh, tickled on. You're heading to Yellow Belly next. I'm, he I'm heading to Yellow Belly, and then uh, then I got a plant turnaround again from all of June and part of July. Then Miles of Mayhem. Um, Rocky Mountain Race Week 2.0 is still kind of up in the air for me. Uh, Bailey uh, Bailey suckered me into sick 66. Um, cool. Hell yeah. So, so I've signed up for that one. Um, I think that I think that'll be it. Uh, unless, like, I've been wanting to go to the Pontiac Nationals for a long time. Uh, they keep bugging me to go down. Yeah, there. your your car would kill at the Pontiac Nationals. <clears throat> So I'd like to do that at some point, but uh, yeah, you can't do it all in one year. So, <laughs> well, and you got the plant turnaround, and you know, why don't you just go get fired like me, and then you can do all the shit. <laughs> <laughs> because then I wouldn't be able to do any shit. <laughs> <laughs> what do you, I mean, everything's paid for, right? It's, oh, it's yeah. a built Pontiac. It's good to go. <laughs> oh my god! Freedom eighty-five. Uh, Freedom eighty-five. That's my saying. That's right, <laughs> baby. Plus, yeah, you could. I mean, you steal a lot. What? <laughs> Call me later. I'll I'll walk you through it. <laughs> uh, what about you, Bill? What are you uh, What are you coming into? Uh, signing up for uh, Race Week One Point Oh. Um, and in fact, we're sponsoring the Stick Shift class. Uh, Bam! Those... I can't wait to Sponsor talk about it all class. week. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. And then we're uh, doing the same same thing. Yep. And then. Uh, Doing 2.0 and sponsoring the stick shift class for that one too. Giddy up. Nice. So Hell yeah. That's that's what I have planned this this summer. Um I don't know if a yeah, I don't think a third event's gonna make it in the cards this summer, but for sure those two. It's been pretty funny because the last couple of years um we've had Circle D as a sponsor for the stick shift class. <laughs> right. Which is if you guys don't know, that's a torque converter company, but Dan Paul Mary. As a stick car, and because he's in the stick class, he was like, I am sponsoring the stick class with a torque converter company. <laughs> take take yeah. it or leave it. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, so we, we've, been, we've been really happy to have Dan on, um, in you know, as the uh, stick shift class sponsor for years as a torque converter manufacturer. But um, it'll be cool to have him on in a, uh, in a more automatic based class when we actually bring in some stick shift shit into the stick <laughs> shift class. It's going to be cool. Yes. Yes. Drink. I think it's going to be, it's going to be cool. It is going to be cool. Um, tell me, damn, this, my, this is my last beer. I'm going on number four. So, I mean, Ooh. just so you know, <laughs> <laughs> tell me about the one that got away. What car did you sell that you shouldn't have sold? Mr. Guido. Um, Probably the 69 Firebird. <clears throat> like looking back now, throw a stick in it. Cage is easy to build. Uh, it wasn't super light either, though, but uh, it was a nice car. Like it was palladium silver with a black top. Yeah, it was. A, Ooh, that's it was a, good, a good looking car. Yeah, it was a good, it was a good looking car. It just, it, uh, that's probably the one. Mr. Uh, Mr. Armstrong. Still waiting because this is the first muscle car I've ever owned. <laughs> yeah, but you've had a, a, a nice slew of mm -hmm. Nissan versus. Uh no, no. <laughs> no, I, I, I had a I had a bunch of Subarus and none of them were cool. And then um then I bought my first new car and it was in fact two years old, but it was a and I still drive it. It's got almost two hundred thousand miles, but it's a 2015 Volkswagen sport wagon. <laughs> PDI six speed diesel. It is, and it has a tune on it, and it's awesome. I mean, it gets like 40 plus miles a gallon. It makes 300, 350 foot pounds of torque, and at sea level, it just yeah. annihilates the tires in first Hell and second yes. gear while it gets 40 miles a gallon. It's amazing. I, yeah. So, and and you know, I've ridden in that thing, and it's, it's, it's crazy awesome, and it makes torque like now. It's awesome. It's super. Yeah. Cool. It's it's a great car, and and honestly, I'm at a little bit of a loss as to what to replace it with because I'm sold on the wagons. Like they are so useful. Um, I can't get another one Civic wagon. <laughs> yeah, I can't get I another diesel. I can't get another diesel because they don't import them here anymore. Right. Um, 
And some of the wagons I really like, I just can't bring myself to pay that kind of money for them. I, I thought I found the perfect car, but then I realized they don't import the wagon to the U.S. So uh, <laughs> well, still, you, can you import it? No, you can for a year, and then then you, you can't keep it here. So yeah. So no. So I'm not sure. Not sure what to do. Um, I think Chris Pine wants to know: Are either of you going to catch Chris Pine? Oh, that was that's PJ asking that, and I oh, said maybe if he doesn't upgrade his cage, <laughs> that's, that's right. the only way we're going to catch him. Yeah, the, the problem Everyone is this. Knows that the wagons look at all the wagon love. Yeah, so I love he, Stevie. I love your I love your fiance is tagging all the uh, things in her, and I think in fact she drove my Volkswagen and then she bought one. She did, and yeah. she um, she actually bought hers because of the color. We were driving down Colfax and we had no idea. We were like, let's just go see because there's dealerships like crazy on Colfax. Yeah. And there, there it was. And it's the craziest color. Um, I, I can't, she'll, she'll tell us what it is, but it, like a if you've movie. ever, if you've oh, ever seen, um, what's the movie with Joe Pesci? Um, he's uh, my, my cousin Vinny. Yeah. It's, metal, <laughs> it's metallic mint green. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's it's beautiful. Yeah, I love that. It's color. metallic mint green, exactly. Yeah. It's the the Volkswagen yeah. is so good. Um, okay. So, Bill, since you haven't sold your muscle car yet, if you had stack of money, unlimited stack of money, but you had to buy a dragon drive car, a current dragon drive car, whose car are you taking home? So, in fact, earlier this year, I got really, really close because I had told. A number of people, my really good friend, Bill Leak, I said, you know what? If an early 62, 63 Falcon was to ever show up on Marketplace that already has a cage and stuff in it, I'd be really hard pressed not to buy that as a roller. And sure as shit, what does he send me? He sends me a link to an early 60s Falcon that, show, that showed up. And so it sounds easy. I would have just had to dump, just put my drivetrain in it and it would have been probably a thousand pounds lighter than what I got. Um, and I passed, I just, I got a lot of irons in the fire right now and uh, trying to launch this new product in my other company and stuff. I just, I passed, but that would be it. I would build an early Falcon stick shift, pretty much same drivetrain I've got in this car. So specifically I'm looking for someone's car. Oh, someone's car. Like a current drag and drive car. Not like so, your perfect car, but so I'm super bad at names. But um, the guy with uh, is it Team D Performance? He's building that Falcon that looks just badass. He had that Mustang. He was at my house fixing his car over race week. Right, right. And, and I'm I feel so bad. I'm just terrible with names. I, I'm I'm trying to Google it right now. Yeah, he's building um, an awesome, awesome Falcon, and that would be that would be the one. Nice, yeah. nice. Mr. Guido. Frank Sapinero's wagon. Ooh, yeah. That's no a doubt. good one because it's it's <sighs> like what does it run low sevens, mid sevens? It's been it's it's ran sixes. It has run in the sixes. Like six ninety five or something, but and, and if you look at it, it's like it doesn't look like a six second. Oh, the wagon. teal one. Oh, I know which one. Yes, yeah, the teal. One. Exactly. That thing is just nasty. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah, it's, it's so nasty. nasty. No, I yeah, agree with you 100%. Yeah. That's just such a good one. Yeah. yeah. I, I tell people all the time that, that for me, that one is he's, he can still drive that one. He takes his kids to school. I mean, uh, it, that is an amazing. It's got and a six O cage in it. Um, that's it's about still, the way it would uh, go it's automatic. still a little tire, little tire. It's a 315. Yeah. <laughs> Look at this comment. He said he would buy Richard Guido's car. They don't have a faster car than Rich. <laughs> Is that you? <laughs> no, it's not me, but that's a good one. That's a good one. <laughs> oh, I'm trying to show uh, – because I'm having the issues here with the uh, with my world, I cannot find – here it is. Bam. Share. And it's right there. That's Frank's car. Oh yeah, yeah. that thing's that thing's sweet. That's in his driveway. He yep. puts a, he's yeah, doing it's burnouts. Christmas and his, it, it's got the Christmas, got the Christmas tree. tree. That's the Christmas. Yeah, that's the Christmas tree burnout. Yeah, that's super cool. 
Yeah. Hell yes. Yeah, I can't wait till he comes comes out again. I think he's, you know, his kids are probably just at an age where he spent a lot of time with the family. So eventually he'll come out. But he's super that that car is like oh, it's beautiful. Beautiful. It's so nice. And it's got like really good body work, really good paint work. The thing is at the end so talented. It does have AC. He's so talented too. Like he does all that work himself. It's very impressive. And he's got that other one, that copper colored like Nova two. That's like an easy eight second car. Right. And it's right. It's, it, like your backup car is like that thing. And it's like a show car. <clears throat> right. Yep. And then he built that. You remember he built that dually truck. Yeah. Air and it had and an, stuff. L, an LV seven. That was like a thousand foot pounds. And yeah. 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 It's he was crazy. like, I can't get these tires to uh, to balance. How do I balance them? Well, you just do big burnouts on them. <laughs> okay, great. Ah! <laughs> if I had to pick a number two, it would be Nick's uh, 77 Trans Am, though. That thing is oh, – That amazing. thing is sweet. It's super cool. And if you get a chance, he, yep, he, he, oh, he races it at Sick Week a bunch. And, yeah, it looks – it's it's sort of that same car. Like, it doesn't look like it should be as quick as it is. But it is. Yes. Okay, yeah. I got I got a number two. It would be Plemons sixty nine Camaro. Who? Is it Steve Plemons or Chris Plemons? Steve. More racing. Yeah, Steve. Steven, Steven, yes. Steven Plemons, Plemons, yeah. Yeah. That thing is just nasty. It's been like seven fifties. It's oh, so yeah. sweet. It's so yeah. sweet. Hell yes. <laughs> I've I've got a special one, and and this is going to be a funky one for our um for our like seventeen. And a half viewers. Um, who's who's been your favorite guest on Clutch Brothers? Who? And and not to like you know put you on the well, spot. Probably probably you, but that one hasn't even been released yet. That was a good one. <laughs> that was a good one. <laughs> Basically done, Bill. <laughs> Man, we've had a lot of people on there. Um, and really good ones too. So many good ones. So, so many good ones. I'd almost have to categorize it in a couple of different ways. The most entertaining one, I think, was probably with Chris Moore and Stephen Plemons. Like Stephen Plemons is hilarious. Like he, he just kills so me. Funny. Um, yeah. But the one that surprised me the most was actually Nick Coleman. Like great dude, smart. You know, when you see him on thirteen twenty video, it seems like he's. Um, you know, a bit of a redneck. That dude has got it going on. Like he is a smart, he is one smart dude. Nice. Like I learned a lot from him. I mean, Ben Straight. I mean, we've we've had so many good guests. So that. many good ones. I mean, it's just yeah. yeah. And and like I've watched a bunch of them, and I'm like, man, that was their best one. And then I I like I listen <laughs> to the next one, and I'm like, that was their best one. And yeah, then, I, I would say for, and I really like the high nerd content. The really lot of yeah high level say. information. Like I'm, I really like the ones with Ben Strader. He's, he, I think he's the only repeat guest we've had, but the episodes are so different. Like he just gushes high level knowledge. Like I have to go back and re-listen and I still don't catch it all. So yeah, it's really, yeah. really, yeah, he's super smart. Like just the data and the math channels and stuff he sends, he sets up are fantastic. And, and yes, the one with, uh, <clears throat> with John and Frank was fantastic too because oh yeah that was that was one of the first ones that we we kind of went to a little a lot different level than we ever had before it was way personal and and that was cool too like I really liked that too so like yeah Frank's a great guy hell yes hell yes I, I know that's a tough one like someone asked me the other day like who's your favorite <laughs> guest and I was like fifteen. <laughs> that are my favorite and I yeah. really like all of them. Like they're, yeah. they've all been fun in their own way, but like 15 of them yeah. are my favorite. So it, yeah. it's like I'm trying to ask you like, who's your favorite kid? And like yeah. in the back of your head, you might know, but like you won't tell anyone. Right. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They're all different. They're all different. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Um, what is your favorite racetrack you've been to? Who? Hmm. Well, I'm a little biased. I mean, I love Bandemir. It's very convenient. It's super close to my house. It's got to be one of the top five best tracks in the whole country or was. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm going to go with that one for right now. It's That's always my answer when someone asks me. It's just, yeah. 
it doesn't even matter that it was five minutes from my house. Like yeah. if you lived across the country and walked out from the concession stand and into bleachers on the side of the mountain, Bandamere is the jam. It's amazing. Yeah, it's amazing. Yeah, well, it's closed, fellas, so you're gonna have to let it go. Um, <laughs> wow, <laughs> D- Dick, that's th- that's three beers, dickhead rich. <laughs> um, so I'm everyone, gonna have to go everyone, dickhead rich. <laughs> I'm gonna have I think to go I with change his name. <laughs> I'm gonna have to go with uh, Bradenton, actually. Uh, Victor that runs the track. Um, I just like the pits on both sides. Uh, don't get me wrong. I love Bandamere too. If it was still open, I'd probably pick it, but it's old It's old news now. So I'm going to have to go with Bandamere. <laughs> okay. I mean, uh, go with uh, Bradenton. So you went for Bandamere. Bandamere anyway, even though it's closed. <laughs> <laughs> Dickhead Rich, as you can tell on the screen. Changed it. <laughs> okay. Oh, <laughs> just so you know. <laughs> Um, (laughs) this will be a good one and this is one I actually included in this podcast because of Rich Guido but trailer or no trailer you going to go first Bill or you want me to oh I'll answer trailer 100% it's it's a game changer and especially when it matches the whole rig like it's like, and, and, like yours? Yeah, like mine. <laughs> like but, your... But, yeah, but <laughs> like when the, when the trailer's dialed in, like, you know, mine has a solar panel. It's got an inverter. It's got its own battery. Like, it's... Oh, God. Dick Hedrich. Look at the guy going here. <laughs> um, and, and then the whole lid flips out, so you have a 4 by 8 size workbench, should you need it when people are doing the rain dance against you and you have to fix stuff and then you still win the event just like that <laughs> just like that and and no i mean if you guys want some uh some really good trailer tips um bill's got sort of one of the og like purpose built drag and drive trailers um it was it was when i think really alex taylor had theirs around the same time you had yours and yeah. I mean that was kind of it. It was like you and them at the at the moment that had like this is built for this, and like you said, like a yeah. solar panel, a, a battery, and it's all um, aluminum. It's all aluminum. It's all aluminum, right? It and it's got a, brakes on it. It's got a big axle in it. It's got full size wheels and tires on it. the The thing yeah. is, the thing is super cool. It's it's it's, it's designed to cruise at a hundred all day long, and it's because got that's what you do. Well, you should, <laughs> but it's got, yeah. I mean, and it's, it's the, the height is perfect. You can still see out the rear view mirror, uh, the 15 inch wheels with matching hubcaps for going down the road, but it's a Ford pattern. I mean, if I had to throw that on the front of the car, I could, right. um, yeah, it just, it works. And, and the reason that I asked, because I actually had to build, I had to when I say I built, I stole uh, a mop, the like wet floor mop thing, and I built a uh, Rich Guido garage sale, G- gar- garage sale, as he says. <laughs> oh, um, caution, caution, wet floor. Caution, yeah. wet floor, garage sale, because he, <laughs> he brought all of his shit in the trunk one year, and it took him about 45 minutes to unload it and then reload. So about an hour and a half, we're sitting there twiddle our thumbs tracks long closed and rich is lifting his transmission into his trunk so um so trailer or no trailer mr rich guido so i would say i'd rather travel without a trailer but the practicality of having a trailer is uh like it's it's a no-brainer i mean the yard sale i still have a yard sale because i still have to unload my trunk but it's not near as bad as it was before so I, I would rather, just, honestly, though, I'd rather do it without, without a, like I almost did death week without, I loaded up the car, I put a rack on the back just for the fuel, and I was going to do it without because it was, it was 2,000 miles, just the event, um, and it's just more fun to drive without a trailer, but um, 
I would have to I have to say trailer for the practicality piece of it. Well, in your case, you end up packing even more stuff with the trailer. <laughs> you yeah, you, now it. now you can bring a drive share. Yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah. 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 Well, and and that brings up a good point that folks maybe don't know the uh, the twelve and a half now viewers. After I called you dickhead rich, um, <laughs> we lost three. But um, but you still run on race gas in the GTO at the track. Yep. 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 And Bill, you run on E eighty five, right? No C six. You switched. So you switched over to gas as well. Well. I used to run E70 because I didn't have enough fuel pump to run E85. It was right on that edge. And then I hurt the motor, I melted a piston, and I was like, you know what? I'm already changing fuel at the track. I'm just going to go C16. It's more expensive, but when you hurt the motor, the time and the cost and everything else, all of a sudden that $20 gallon doesn't seem so bad. No, exactly. Exactly. The tuning window is so big, you almost can't hurt it. And Rich has proven that with the wrong timing being 15 degrees in the wrong direction. You almost can't hurt the motor on C16. So it's super safe. And um, yeah, I feel pretty confident in just running that. So, and I've had good success with it so far. So, hell yes. Yeah. And I mean, uh, like even, even at Sick Week, like I think the most I've ever burnt is 15 gallons of race fuel. So, yeah. Yeah, and especially, I mean, if you're burning gas, you just don't burn as much. I mean, and, and then you don't need as much pump. You don't need as much injector. You, you have the big wide tuning window, and then you're not susceptible to pump E85 issues that seem to happen every year. Yeah, you yeah. can get gas anywhere with on pump gas. You just put 91 or whatever in it and just go. Right, right. Um. Favorite race, oh, we did the favorite racetrack, trailer, no trailer, advice for newbies. And what I'd like to hear, since we're talking stick shift stuff, a dude that's got an automatic in his car, maybe just heard it. Uh-oh. What, what advice do you have a guy? <clears throat> I think I got the question. You're breaking up a little bit there, Adam. <laughs> but, playing banjo. Okay. You're playing banjo a little yeah yeah <laughs> um, um advice for yeah. newbies new dude dudes just you know maybe you just heard an automatic and putting an auto you know putting a manual back in their car what what advice do you have someone sticking a manual in their car uh well first of all you're not going to hurt anything until you get traction so <laughs> i mean you know I, I see people comment a lot they're like well you know, what do I have to worry about? And it's like, dude, if you just keep radial tires on it, you're not going to hurt a thing because you don't start breaking parts till you start getting traction. So you need to overbuild the drivetrain uh, well beyond what you think it's going to do when you're running a stick. Um, but one of the biggest things to keep in mind, even if the power is only 400 horsepower, is, is clutch management is such a huge, huge key to making this work. You can't just dump the clutch. Um, I mean, it, early on when I didn't know what I was doing, I mean, I had like 400 horse to the tires and I bent all the drive lugs. We could hardly get the damn wheels off the car because <laughs> I didn't realize what I was doing. It, it twisted all the drive lugs on the car. And it was just because I was dumping an aggressive clutch at the track and it had traction. So, yeah, overbuild it or just don't put slicks on it and you'll probably be fine. I would say... Um... And I, so I don't, I don't own uh, clutch burners. It's not my YouTube channel. I'm just a, just a goofy guest, but uh, I would, I would say, go listen to, go listen to all those podcasts before you start. Um, Cause we asked the question many times <clears throat> um, and there's, there's so much good information. It's really why we started it. We wanted to see what we could learn from all the fast guys. And we've had all the fast guys on there. It was totally selfish. <laughs> yeah. And um, there's a bunch of good stuff. So I would say reach out to people um, who who are doing what you want to do. So I kid you not, like my phone, it, every day somebody's asking me some questions and I'm perfectly cool with that. Like, yeah, reach out, so. don't add. Especially the stick car community is so willing to share 
Like we haven't had one guest on there that said, don't talk about this. Right, Bill? Like I, I can't think of anybody who's actually said that to us where they're like, uh, we, don't, we don't really want you to ask that question. Like, the only person that, that hasn't directly answered stuff is Ben Strader, but they're running super competitive factory yeah. X stuff. And, and honestly, the specifics we're asking for don't matter to what we're doing. <laughs> Right. Oh, right. It doesn't matter. <laughs> well, and, and, and I, I did learn like that CA, NMRA, that Coyote stock, like those guys keep a pretty close hold on what they've got because yeah. it's, you know, it, it's just, a, it's a claimer class. Like it's got a sealed block. It's got a sealed ECU. Like the only advantage you have over the next guy is weight or driving or like whatever high suit shit you came up with. So right. I get it. Right. Like, you know, you don't want to, you don't want to share that world, but yeah, um, yeah, you know, it is what it is, but I, I've gotten a chance to uh, announce some races with some, uh, some coyote stock stuff in it. And they're awesome. It's like a, it's like a stock limited car. They're all 60 foot. It's gangster. Yeah. It's all wheelies and <clears throat> yeah, it's, yeah, it's so good. It's so good. So I get it. You know, I mean, in that class, it is what it is. Yeah, yeah, it's very impressive for sure. Hell yes. Um, well, guys, we're two hours in. Um, if you're on the comments, go ahead and throw up one last question if you want to get that in. We're uh, we're we're well drunk. It's beautiful. It's a it's a <laughs> it's such a good time. I got rich rich keto. I got dickhead rich out, <laughs> and and it was super good. I didn't even know I could do that. <laughs> so welcome to my show where I can change your name. <laughs> that was pretty awesome. You know? Hey Rich, we gotta look at that for our podcast. Yeah, see if you can switch our name in the middle of it. <laughs> see if they notice. But, yeah, we won't be able to figure it out, but maybe Travis can. <laughs> yeah, maybe exactly. Tra exactly. Travis probably can. Exactly. Yes. Th throw him an extra five to change his name mid podcast. Yes, yes. And, okay, and I got, honestly, I got, yeah, I got a Rich question. Yep, go ahead. All right, Bill, how fast are you aiming for it to go this year? Uh, if I upgrade you know, the I turbos, first. yeah, if I upgrade the turbos, then uh, already... 100, 100 faster than your best time. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Which is legally 850. <laughs> so, yes, but illegally, one, one, uh, whatever it is, than his best time. Whatever it doesn't matter it is. what it is. Who gives a shit? <laughs> <laughs> ahead of that guy that's right. what about that's you right. rich what what would you be happy with this year uh 835 okay next year 799 ah yes yes so, so 834 and 798 okay. <laughs> got it um this is one the 2025 mega race week um <clears throat> Been talking about maybe doing a stick shift shootout. And I talked to Mr. Rich Keto, who said he already had some sponsors set up for something like this, maybe ready to go. So is there any more you want to talk to about that for the mega race week for next year for a yeah, stick I mean, shift shootout during the uh during the shootout? Yeah, I I'm gonna aim for five thousand dollars, is what I'm gonna aim for. Air uh the guy Eric, who asked, he he already said he's in for five hundred. Bam! And he's got Maverick Debt Company. <laughs> um, we I lost you. Uh, I, I missed his comment there. Must oh, be um, oh yeah. And so I, I I haven't reached out to anybody else yet, but I'm going to start um, when I go like uh, Hanlon Motorsports. Talk to I'll talk to G Force. We'll talk to Kale potentially and maybe Rob Youngblood and see maybe tick um, tick. Uh, I think they'd probably be in. So I don't think we'll have a problem uh, getting maybe getting, um, precision designs would be interested. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Tommy Stark. Yep. Yep. So yeah, if no. you guys don't know, if you've been living under a rock 2025 race week, they're going to do two in one. So 1.0 and 2.0 are going to be competed on the same day. It's going to be nuts. Um, that's my ring. Stevie's oh, okay. home. <laughs> all right. No one is breaking out. into your house. It's all good. <laughs> no one is breaking into your house. 
Um, <laughs> but if you guys have been living under a rock, it's going to be two race weeks. 1.0 is going to be run in the morning. 2.0 is going to be run in the afternoon at the same exact track. Um, I'm going to announce either half and half, or we're going to figure it out, but Chad's going to help me with that. It's going to be freaking insane. But they do the um, the shootout the last day. So what we're trying to do is set up a stick shift shootout. So all the stick, stick shift cars that are in attendance are able to show up to that and uh, and heads up race. And like uh, like Rich was saying, he's trying to get 5000 bucks for that. Um, there's a 5000 bucks for the bracket race winner. There's huge, huge money going on. It's going to be super awesome. So hopefully you guys are around. Um, WAF Racing apparently loves stick racing. So look out to them, possibly, um, for a sponsorship opportunity. But that'll be super cool to see a stick shift shootout. And uh, and hopefully the Canadian Chuck Norris, presented by, is what we're going to put on there. Or Dickhead Rich. <laughs> <laughs> That's how many beer you feed me, I guess. That's right. That is, is. absolutely it right. Is. Perfect. Well, guys, we're two hours in. I think I'm set. I've getting got through all my questions. Everyone else has asked all their stuff, and I think we're good to go. But I want to thank you guys so much for being on this. This has been super fun. Thanks for hanging out with all the technical issues. It has not been uh, my smoothest show, but it's going to be fun. Oh, and awesome. Kevin Schweitzer says that he has his seven-second car with a person in the passenger seat. He does, in a wagon. Yeah, it's a wagon. Yeah, yep. and yep. he was waiting for his comment. So, and then Rich Guido doing 2.0 in the afternoon, Bill doing Rocky Mountain Race Week in the morning, then meet on the last day for the overall stick shift championship. Could be, could be. That could be, that could be kind of neat, so you guys won't even know. <clears throat> well, here, here's the deal. The way it currently... Mm-hmm. The stick class is going to end up being an 850 index class. That's where it's going to end up. <laughs> so. Right, right, because you have to have an 850 cage in that class. So well, no, I think I think uh, we shut off the timer, uh, the times for I, well for the yeah. shootout. You bet your ass shootout. we shut the timers yes. off, yes. and then it you you and do what you do, knows. and you don't do what you don't do. Yes, that's just right. saying. That's right. That's right. I think that's uh, I think that makes a lot of sense. I'll make, yeah, sure my, you know, make sure my draggy's charged up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Absolutely. Exactly. Make sure your draggy's charged up. Yeah. yeah, right, and, then, yeah. and we'll probably also have to help, like, maybe Chad <clears throat> tune on his car and Taylor if he shows up and CJ. There's a whole bunch of people that are a problem now, so we could have to tune some of those cars for him. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we'll have to help him out for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Let me check the tire pressure in one of your tires. Right. Just yeah. one corner. Just I got one. you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, Adam, Our, thank you so much. I really yeah, appreciate it. Yeah. And, and you can you can find these cats. Um, Clutch Burners is the name of the podcast. And then um, you guys are on additional social media channels. Tell us what you're what you're on and what you're doing. So I've got uh, I've got two YouTube channels, uh, Bankshift Billy. Dot com is the website, uh, Bankship Billy on YouTube. And then I have another one, uh, just V8 Billy 66, which is similar to the license plate. But most of this content's going out on Bankship Billy right now. Sweet. And I'm Rich Guido on Facebook, Guido Rich on uh, Instagram, and then Canadian Chuck Norris 69 on YouTube. Of course, it's of course you're 69. Um, <laughs> it's it's nothing to do with the Firebird, right? No. Um, good, good for your wife. But um, <laughs> if you guys haven't noticed, he's been doing a lot of updates on YouTube as well. Um, so tons and tons of like really cool in depth like valve training that works and fuel pumps that work and X Y Z and one two three. Check out all the uh, Canadian Chuck Norris insider type stuff um, on his YouTube. He's been doing a bunch of that. And again, the Clutch Burners podcast, these cats have on some, uh, you know, really the, the creme de la creme of the the, uh, the stick shift type racing community. And, uh, and it, it's, it's super cool and one of my favorites for sure. So check those out. Um, you can get all the Clutch Burners podcast on anywhere you can get podcasts. It's simulcast everywhere, I believe, correct? Yep. Correct. Yeah, and uh, and then YouTube for all the rest of the uh, the stuff they were listing there. So uh, make sure you check those out. 
Uh, fellas, I'm going to bring you in the background real quick. I'm going to tell everyone thanks for being on here and putting up with our bull crap. And awesome. uh, I will say good night to you before we leave. Okay. Awesome. Thanks again, Adam. Appreciate yep, it. Definitely. Thank thanks, you, guys. Adam. So, Rich and Bill, guys, how much fun was that? Holy moly. We had a, a heck of a night. Technical issues, all sorts of stuff. I've still got my stuff like band-aided together, and I've got to figure that out before next week. But lots of stuff coming up for me here uh, very soon. There will be an O'Reilly short coming out or a, uh, a O'Reilly YouTube video coming out very soon. Collaboration with uh, with Vice Grip Garage and Tony Angelo, Alex Taylor, Chad Reynolds, and Tate Morgan from the Gambler 500. So very cool stuff coming out with that very soon. So pay attention to that. Also, um, I am going to be next Thursday flying out to Tampa because I'm going to Bradenton for the Freedom 500. This is going to be super duper cool. This is a, a Cletus event. It's going to be on the Freedom Plus channel. And I'm super humbled to be able to be there. And um, very cool deal with doing some like in, in the pit type reporting stuff like I did at Sick Week um, there on Freedom Plus. They are doing a deal. If you buy anything from Summit Racing and you, you use the code Cletus, you get a free view for that Freedom 500. Also includes a preview for the Burnout Rivals, and I'll be there for that as well. So that coming up very soon. Next week, um, actually coming up here just in a few days, I've got Darren and Evan Yuri. Uh, Evan had the Miata in Junior Street last year. So we're going to have them on, my first Junior Street racer, and I'm going to have Darren on as well, bringing his kid along and doing race week stuff. It's going to be super cool. Um, after the Freedom 500, I have Jason and Liz, Liz King. Um, they've got that orange Willys and an orange Fox Body Mustang. They're going to be very, very, very cool to have on. And then I'm off to NMCA and NMRA in Rockingham, North Carolina, I'm going to be doing that deal and talking about Coyote stock. Lots and lots of that happening at the NMCA and MRA race. So I'll be in Rockingham the uh, second week of April. And then the final week of April, I've got a week off. I'll be back at the King of the Open Road. Uh, so I'll be doing a lot of announcing stuff coming up here very soon. So my unemployed ass stays employed. So that's kind of the plan. But um, thanks to everyone who has hired me. I've got a full April I've got a wide open May right now, so, so we're uh, we're still work, working that out. But everybody, thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you guys so much. Hot dog videos are definitely coming. If you live in Bradenton, definitely come up there. If you're in Rockingham, cruise up and check it out. Um, lots of cool stuff coming up. But you guys, thanks so much for uh, tuning into a special Friday edition of we're actually getting like real life drunk, having some parking lot beers here on that school drink. But guys, Friday night. Thanks so much for coming to an end here. Next week, i got um, Darren and Evan. We will see you guys very soon. And then again, Freedom 500 on Freedom Plus. That will be next weekend, and we're going to have a blast. But you guys, thanks so much. Tuning in. That's a cool drink. Have a fantastic weekend.